Hello, listening people. Hello. You are listening to Spin Polish Presents Unappreciated Masterpieces. I'm Ryan Sawinski. And I'm Bartek. And you're not going to give a last name? Never with the last names with you, is it, Bartek? Fuck off. Is that his last notes? Bar- you're listening to Spin Polish Presents with Ryan Sawinski and Bartek, Bartek fuck, fuck off. off. <laughs> <laughs> and what we do here on Unappreciated Masterpieces is we do feature length audio commentaries for films that need to be talked about. Unappreciated masterpieces. Films that we believe need to be looked into more. Ones that aren't completely forgotten, but the ones that aren't completely remembered either. They're lingering in the background of your life, of your journey, and you may or may not have seen it, but you know of it somehow. And we talk about these movies and try and shine a light on them. We try and bring up the positives as well, of course, investigating the negatives of why this movie has not been appreciated within our lifetime. Yeah, like like that movie where the thing happens. Now look, I didn't say a movie, but you thought of one just now, didn't you? Yeah, exactly. And could it be the one that we may be talking about today? Who knows? I don't even know what one we're talking about today. Bartek, what's the one we're talking about today? Um, uh, the movie that we are talking about today is Gura Charovnica. Oh, um, ooh, uh, I don't know, look, I don't speak Polish, and also before we actually started recording, I asked Bartek what it was called, and he said a completely different Polish sentence to that yeah, one he just I, said, so, ooh. I said, <laughs> Race to, uh, Witzke Montaina. Oh, you mean Race to Witch Mountain with the rock? Yeah, yeah I said, <laughs> I, I was reading it as if a Polish person were looking at the English title. Now, so, audience... You might have heard me say Gura Charovnica and thinking, that's familiar, that is familiar, that, that title is so familiar. It's because in two episodes ago, we did a movie whose Polish title was simply Charovnica. Oh, I can't remember what movie that was. Was that, was that, uh... I'll be home for Christmas? Or, <laughs> I don't know. I'll be witched home for Christmas. <laughs> I'll be witched! So, as you heard, we're doing the... 2009 classic, mm-hmm. I do believe, uh, Race to Witch Mountain with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, or in this movie, Dwayne Johnson. We should respect him. And, uh, <laughs> we don't always do this alone, Bartek, do we? Often, we have a guest. And this time around, we have a very special guest. A guest who has <gasps> been on the show other times. What's so his name? I don't know. What is his name, Bartek? Ladies and gentlemen, our guest today is a very, very special, important message. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, a never ser- stop loving each other. <laughs> Today's guest is a concept. <laughs> yeah. Today's concept is it's, called it, what? It's a juggling gorilla. Oh, baby's day out. Yeah. So we It's are... Reese McKenzie. Yes, Reese McKenzie is... Reis Guzje, fellow listeners. How are you today? I don't know. I don't speak Polish, so uh, I don't know what he's saying. I, I, okay. I think I don't speak Polish. Anyway. <laughs> I'll explain myself. It is not Polish. Fuck. German, huh? It's gibberish. Oh, I speak gibberish. I knew that for a fact. I come from the island of Jibba. So, Reese McKenzie, who has been on multiple episodes... Two before this one. Two. Meet Dave, in which we met Reese for meet the first that kid. time. And, uh, meet Catch that Dave. Kid, yeah. And Catch That Kid. No, Meet That Kid we, and Catch Dave. Which we caught Reese on a good day. <laughs> so, we... Don't die. This movie did bring a lot of emotions to the panel. This movie, Race to Witch Mountain, just before we were talking... Brought up a lot of a mixed emotions. One in particular, which was the feeling of being riveted. I think is what everyone agreed on. So this is, of course, the Disney classic. And it is a remake, redoing of mm-hmm. previous films. Have we seen those previous? I've tried to look for Escape to Witch Mountain. I could not find it at all. Oh, well, you weren't looking in Video Easy then. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Which is a video rental but, store. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? No. No, no. <laughs> have you seen it? No, I haven't. So you guys are just like me, champions, because this is the movie to watch if you want something relating to Witch Mountain. 
So we are going to start this in just a second. But before we do, I'm going to ask a big question, which is one I often ask, which is, have we seen this movie before doing this show? Reese. Yes, I saw it in the cinemas. Ooh, and how was that experience? Do well, tell. I don't remember probably the first half hour of this movie at what the cinema because you were sick. No, uh, my friends and I were having a popcorn fight. Oh, how old were you? Uh, you so two thousand and nine, I would have been fifteen. So, yeah, old enough for a popcorn yeah, fight. Yeah, we, we nearly got kicked out. <laughs> but Great. That, old yeah. enough to see an MA movie. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh so, Bartek, what about you? Had you seen this movie before this? No, I'd only seen the memes. Well, Bartek <laughs> is out of date because I had seen this in the cinema too. So, Bartek, yeah. you're the old one out. because well, I saw Gulliver's Travels in the cinema. Well, I saw Race to Witch Mountain. And you know why I saw it in the cinema? Because... In my country town, it was the only thing on, and it was a Saturday afternoon, and my dad had to be at his soccer game later that afternoon, and we were wondering, we were kind of lost in town, and we're like, oh, let's see Race to Witch Mountain, and then go to the soccer game. So, that's a good enough reason to see a movie, and if you haven't seen this before, well, get your copy ready, because we're going to talk extensively about it, because, hey, if you haven't seen it yet... We're going to tell you all about it, and you're going to really feel it. But if you have, this is going to be even better, because you will be hearing us talk about a movie that nobody else talks about, not even The Rock himself. I don't know why, but get it together, people. Get your copy ready, because we're going to start this in 3, 2, 1, play. So, Disney, Disney. guys. Yeah. Disney, we've done a few Disney movies on the show now. Um, I think we've made a giant consensus that usually it is considered that Disney animated films are the real kind of uh, high quality uh, product that Disney puts out. And their live action ones are uh, a mixture of failures and and uh, too ambitious for their means. To go back to the little joke I made earlier... Disney, I didn't say a movie, but you probably thought of a certain type. You probably thought the animated movies. Mm. Yeah. So, Race to Witch Mountain. Um, you know, it's based on a book. Have you read the book, guys? No, didn't know that. I didn't know it was actually a book. I agree with Bartek. Oh, well, you... you he agrees that. with my... Fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you agree. I disagree, actually, <laughs> on this occasion. I'll be the devil's, devil's avocado in this. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> the devil's avocado, it doesn't taste The devil's good. alone, Ryan. Oh, yeah. good. So, I saw this in the cinema. Reese, you saw this in the cinema. And Bartek, you saw this for the show. I saw the memes. Okay, so let's... Uh, you know what? Let's talk about the memes. Bartek, tell me more about the memes, because I am somewhat familiar with the meme, but I didn't know there's more memes. Oh, no, just the... I mean, like, the... When I say memes, plural, I mean, like, examples of that one. Okay, tell us about the meme. Well, basically, it's one of those three-panel exploitable memes where the first panel is Dwayne Johnson driving and saying something. The second panel is Sarah in the back seat saying something contrary opposing or that would surprise Dwayne Johnson and the third panel is uh Dwayne Johnson looking back at her in shock oh yes uh, yes and is there a good example um one that uh, particularly comes to mind of this meme that really you like I before I watched the movie I was showing my brother a bunch of examples and I remember there being some funny ones but I can't really remember that's either. that's a good meme so good you can't even remember a proper oh, well, example you know how much I love <laughs> memes Ryan he's the meme master I, I can't even remember memes from like that point in time in the movie I mean like I just you laugh at it and then you instantly forget it just like filmmaking there's an art to meme making because really who would have who sat down and said yeah I'm gonna make a meme out of the Rock in Race to Witch Mountain. I mean, who who was the hero that did that? I mean, what's their story? Someone thought that the exchange <laughs> between Dwayne Johnson's character and a small child and a and a teenage child uh, was just so meme worthy. 
Yeah. They thought that reaction right there, that could be a punchline to every joke. Yeah, but meme worthy, you could you can make anything meme worthy. You just take just one picture where they just make like an awkward face and then off you go. Hell on the, I guess you could even say this show has memes, like whenever you bring up like that my line that I don't know how dogs work or something you like don't that. Know. Yeah, and here we have CGI from the 2000, uh, late 2000s. Isn't it weird how CGI within those within the few years between this and now has improved drastically? Yeah, but it's still, it still it was like still really impressive for its time. Apparently, was it? So, yeah, was it? Oh, apparently, no. so here we have the bad guy. Well, one of like fifteen. The naughty boy yeah. of the movie. The naughty boy. Um, yeah. So smug face. They've all and Miles Teller is there for the ride as well. He's the guy whose character development is he gets a gun, yeah. <laughs> and he, not just right. a gun. It's mostly a he wants big a gun. gun. But then he, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, so so we we saw this in the cinema, Reese. Yeah. Um, you were too busy being a dickhead to enjoy this first half. No, hour. I wasn't being the dickhead necessarily. <laughs> okay, defend yourself these many years later. Go <laughs> on. Okay, look. Because they were so bored within the first five minutes, they just started getting like. So your friends are uncultured swines. No, I, ooh, burn, burn. I, yeah, I didn't I, hear a no to that. So well, yes, it's the answer. I was just like, stop it, guys! Seriously, we're trying to watch the movie, and then when we did watch the movie, I, it didn't make much of an impact at all. So I was just like, maybe the popcorn fight should have gone on the whole movie. Then maybe we- you know, I actually did think a way to improve this movie would have been. A 90 minute movie entirely within the cab. Like, <laughs> don't get out of the cab. Everything that happens is in the cab, and everything's just happening around the cab. And it's actually just like driving Miss Daisy kind of movie about aliens uh, yeah. and the rock. I personally think it's disgusting that the stormtroopers were talking about Geonosians. Yeah? What, what, what was wrong, Bartek? Why are the stormtroopers talking about Geonosians? Geonosians have nothing to do with the prequel, uh, sorry, the sequel trilogy, the the original trilogy, I mean. <sighs> well, you got to stare, Bartek. You know, uh, here's here's the thing I, I love about about this. Why are they wearing these space outfits? Sci-fi. So, oh, just to make it look sci-fi. Yeah, I agree with Bartek. It's just like no. Ooh. He didn't even say that. He just said sci-fi, and you read. <laughs> and you read I made it more. Explicit. You read more into what Bartek offhandedly says than what Bartek actually means. I'm just trying to Bartek give him a helping say, hand. Yeah, sci-fi. I'm sci-fi. Just gonna, <laughs> later on, I'm gonna answer a question with cheese and spinach, and Reese will say like a thesis. <laughs> Reese will oh. get out and be like, "Well, what Bartek's, com- what Bartek's communicating is the uh, relevance <laughs> of the socio-economic platforming of." America during the 2000s. And I'll be, that'll be his response to me making gorilla noises. <laughs> and, I'm like, That's and I'm like, damn, Bartek's really good. So here we have um, plot device walk into his cab because, you know, she is a character not yet, but later on she will be. But for the moment being, she's like, hey, I'll be in the movie later. Hey. Yeah. Which is, you know, some people say, hey, that might be weak characterization or even a weak female character, but. Uh, uh, this is where the movie really gets you. This is where you might say the movie is one of the best movies ever made, if not genius, which is later on, she punches a guy out and then offhandedly says, I grew up with three older brothers. Oh, See? Making yeah, that was a good a moment strong... in the film. That was a good moment. Hear this? That's me banging my finger on my own hand because that's me indicating she's a strong female character. Because she's punching you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I can't, I can't stop talking about how great she is. I mean, mmm. So The Rock lives in this place, which I believe, you know, I feel like if The Rock wasn't a wrestler, this is, this is, I imagine him being a cab driver in Vegas. He's just a down in his luck guy, <laughs> yeah. wanting to box, and Wait, he gets a big chance to- Are you trying to tell me this isn't Taxi Driver? No, I'm telling you that this it is- This is Rocky. Is it Rocky? Oh, Rocky yeah, it's, Driver. It's, yeah, Rocky it's Driver. Dwayne the Rocky Johnson. <laughs> yeah. So, do you guys call him The Rock? Or Dwayne Johnson when he's him, acting. I call him The Rock. I call him The Rock. I call him Dwayne Johnson. You do? You do? I, I'm not a huge fan Thanks, of Echo. his, so whenever <laughs> I think of him, yeah, I think of his name. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm just so used to The Rock, and my favourite film with The Rock, I... Scorpion him, King? Yeah. No, Welcome to the Jungle. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to... Or otherwise known as The Rundown. 
Oh, all the nice ones. This is a rundown, but I prefer Welcome to the Jungle. Welcome it... to the Jungle! We got The Rock! Yeah. I love The Rock in um, the cinematic classic known as Mummy 2. Ah, yes. <laughs> we can all remember CGI. the great CGI of The Rock in that <laughs> film. I like the background cops from that last shot. Really? Yeah? Simply because I've been an extra before, and you know, the direction you're given is just talk to each other. Why not? Fuck it. Whatever. Just talk. And do you think they're talking about The Rock? And they're probably just mouthing randomly, and it's just brings a smile to my face yeah I, there's it's the simple things that bring a smile to Bartek's face I can agree because I when a... I've been an extra I've like mouthed song lyrics to people and I just found it funny and I saw it on live television yeah once when I was on Neighbours it was my second ever time I was mouthing like a Dr. Evil monologue ah oh, that's the only way you do it if I was on Neighbours I would be mouthing everything that The Rock says in Race to Witch Mountain so here's something We've talked about it on an episode of the show already, The Tuxedo, the episode we did. But I think it's, obviously, we have to bring it back I think to, I know to this, say. which is The Rock himself, Dwayne Johnson. Yes. Yeah. What do we think of him? Because, you know, we discussed previously on the show that Bartek and I both like Dwayne Johnson, but I know I personally feel like Dwayne Johnson hasn't had that movie yet. He hasn't had the career definer. He hasn't had the one that everyone's like, yes, that's the the movie with The Rock. Like, he hasn't had the character. He hasn't had that thing that will make The Rock bigger than what he is currently. He's not going to have The Rock adventures like Jackie Chan did. Yeah, he hasn't had, he hasn't had that iconic I... film or character of his own. Uh, it's, uh, you know what, I was just, I was going through all the movies that I know The Rock's in, I'm just thinking, uh. Like, he's good, don't get me wrong. Like, I think he's a great performer, a great actor. He just hasn't had the movie. one yet. He hasn't had that movie yet. Yeah, I mean, you know... Even if you don't count Scorpion King, that maybe they remember from Scorpion King, because that was his first... Big. Yeah. One problem I have is I can't think of any other movie I've seen him in. Well, he was, um... Doom? He was in Doom, the video game movie, as the hero slash villain. Oh yeah, we could. Could that him. be on the show? Oh, that is on the list. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, it does have a great action sequence in which is exactly like the first person shooting of uh, the game. That was actually really like good. The original game? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's right like on. Fast and, and Furious has... movies. Five, Fast and Furious. Six and I've seven. seen the third one. And he's in the Tooth Fairy, uh, uh, game. <laughs> but that'll never be on the show, right? No, no, of course. <laughs> so what I'm saying is. Do we like The Rock, and do we want him to succeed? Yes. As, an, as a as a Dwayne Johnson, yeah. So, so we want him to succeed. What do you think's holding him back? Agent. Is... What? Agent, maybe. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, his, wait, a, his agent's holding him back. Wait, 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 no, well, no, no, like... no, wait, wait. Say it again. Agent. Okay, now let's okay, read look, something I really think, deep into this. <laughs> I think what he's saying is that. Um, he, he, he's really opposed to this whole idea of the Men in Black franchise because think of the Men in Black who, who are the two that you think of you think of Will, Will Smith, Smith and, and Tommy, Tommy Lee, Lee Jones, Jones. Yes. Uh, excuse me but and Patrick Tommy, Warburton yeah and only one of those three is you know black and a former wrestler and, yeah. and you know the whole idea of token black people there can only be one so he can't be an agent from the MIB because there's already a token black person there oh, yeah. that's an interesting point of view now, now Reese, let me jump in I think Reese was really trying to uh, emulate the word, uh, not agents, or agent. I think he actually said it wrong. I think he meant Asians. And I think he meant ah, that the, the well, Asians are stopping him from <laughs> breaching. Because, you know, you got to make it big in uh, China before you can make it big anywhere. Oh, so that's why you were comparing him wait, to Jack Black. Hang on, yeah. hang on, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Wait, 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 Reese, Reese. Please, it's my show. Okay, and Bartek, oh. We've got to read more into what that one word meant. <laughs> Um, okay. It could mean that his personal agent, who is a Asian perhaps, oh. is stopping him from being a big, big success. No, I think, you know what it was? <laughs> he didn't say agent, he said agent. Oh! He's a gentleman, he's letting other people have the spotlight. <laughs> he's sacrificing uh, I, his own fame. I feel like a politician for, for right now. People. God damn it. I salute you, Dwayne. Yeah, do I, you know, some people might say, why did The Rock let uh, 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 Paul Walk oh have God. a bigger career? Because The Rock knew that he was going to die young, and he thought, give this kid a, give this kid a chance, let him be in the Fast and Furious is more than me. You know? Also, also, the Such last- a, You knew Brendan Fraser would flop eventually. He knew, he knew that he uh, had to help him. Also, rest in peace, Brendan Paul Walker, Walker sounds like water. 
Rock, water, <laughs> rock, huh? Fire, yeah. Fire. And with yeah. fire comes danger. Danger. And the rock is all about danger. Uh, you know no, what's really... danger? Danger is <laughs> this movie. So, Reese, what were you trying to say? <laughs> you know what? I've completely forgotten. His age... just... I think he was trying to say his agent was holding him back. <laughs> no, I, I'm trying to say, like, maybe his agent is getting him these films, but the films he's getting is not, you know, the best projects he could possibly do. Well, mm. how about this food for thought? Comparing him to Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan's a, you know, martial artist, and in these movies, he shows off his martial art skills. Yeah. The Rock, Dwayne, uh, Johnny, he was a wrestler, he, so maybe he should be showing off his well, wrestling see, skills? That's the thing that you think, right? But many other wrestlers have done that. Hulk Hogan and all that. And what makes, for me, The Rock stand out above all of them is... He actually has charisma, and uh, a charm, and he's funny, and he's a good-looking guy and all that, and I feel like he could be above a wrestler doing just action stuff. I feel like this kind of movie in which he's doing- I feel like The Rock needs to do an actual comedy. A proper comedy in which he's not playing a version of himself necessarily of Leo. Like, this is kind of why I appreciate this movie, because in this, they're like, you know, he's a big dude. But you know what? He's fighting actually does little to no effort to the people he actually punches. Uh, I guess one or two, but you know what he is good at? Driving. And what, what if... Oh, just like Jake Chan in the tuxedo, he was good at driving and he barely drove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What if we just make him make The Rock do something completely different, like a romantic comedy? Well, no, yeah, I, I could see that. Maybe that'll make him memorable, I'm not sure. I think The Rock would be really great as uh, a, a leading man... In a kind of, uh, uh, you know, Coen Brothers kind of movie where oh, wow. he can play, like how George Clooney in Coen Brothers movies plays the charismatic leading man but a complete buffoon. Yes. I feel like he needs to do that. He needs to play a role in a Coen Brothers esque type of movie in which he's a goofy, charming lead. I keep thinking of. Ha Hail Sorry, Caesar. Reese. He needed to be in Hail Caesar. And he even was. though that was. He was? Yes. You know, for so all, all this talk... He was in Hail Caesar. Who he, was he in Hail Dwayne Johnson? No, no, George Clooney. Oh, George Clooney, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know... <laughs> we need... We this, need... This whole in... time that we were talking, for some reason, I kept thinking of Channing Tatum. Like, he needs to be Channing Tatum. He needs to be, like, he needs to be Channing, Channing Tatum. Tatum. He needs to be... And you know what? He's actually better than Channing Tatum. Like, in my personal opinion, I find The Rock a better actor, far more entertaining, and funnier than Channing Tatum, but he hasn't had... The Channing Tatum effect. Yeah, yet. like I remember there was a lot of like criticisms that Channing Tatum wasn't that great of an actor, but that when he, he was in a uh, Twenty One Jump Street, everything changed. He, he got to kind of be like himself. That and in Magic that Mike. Role. People really yeah. underestimate the effect that Magic Mike had on Channing Tatum's and career. And also, he's a great dancer. Yeah. He's but a... here's the thing. Back to Race Race to Witch Mountain <laughs> <laughs> instead of Channing Tatum's career. This movie really kind of, for me, cements uh, uh, an interesting section of The Rock's career, which is being in children's movies. Because uh, yes. The Tooth Fairy, and what's that one? It's by the same director as the this movie. The Game Plan? Yeah, The Game Plan. I feel like The Rock actually does work in children's movies, unlike Vin Diesel, say, who did... The Pacifier. The Pacifier. These other muscular, goofy guys like Schwarzenegger and all this, and all that who did children's movies. I feel like The Rock is actually the guy who who kind of Doesn't, gets it. Yeah, he's just like, he's doing it for an audience, you know. Maybe, maybe this stuff is what actually is what The Rock should be doing. Instead of what we're saying, maybe he needed to keep doing this stuff because we were too old to appreciate this movie when it first came out. You know, Bartek, like you didn't get to see it. And Reese and I, we saw it. I enjoyed it thoroughly, but... Maybe if I was younger and I and and The Rock was someone who was that defining actor of my childhood, like how Robin Williams say was yeah, someone yeah. in kids' movies for us, and and this and that, and Jim Carrey, he could be that guy that could be in say ten years' time. A lot of new grown-ups will look back and be like, The Rock was my childhood. Yeah, he should get like like how you have that Muniz era. We should get like the Rock era. Yeah, the Johnson era. Or the McConaughey. <laughs> or, or the McConaughey's. Yeah, the Jonas. <laughs> the Jonas's. <laughs> the Dwayne. Dwayne. Dwayne Sons. Yeah. Dwayne. The Dwayne Sons. <laughs> I am Dwayne. So, this movie has a lot of things going on. 
One, we don't find out the actual plot until the last 15 minutes of the movie, which is quite interesting for a children's movie. I kind of really respect the fact that it isn't spoon-feeding you, it isn't jamming it down your throat necessarily uh, hold on what their second, intent hold on. is. You'd call this a children's movie? Definitely. I'd say this is a children's film. I think it's a family movie. Yeah. That's it. A family picture. Yeah, a family more picture. Yeah, right on the money. But you know what I mean, like... The main characters to cling on to are The Rock and these two kids. You know, and it's kind of like, yes, it's a family picture. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, but it's still kind of aimed towards more 10 year old, like 12 year olds and below, I think, than just a fair. Like, the sci fi action and all that stuff keeps the parents entertained, but I think the heart of the message is for younger viewers. Right, right. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> It's seven hundred twenty dollars. That's pretty good. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, you can knock off twenty five percent. Why? Why? Because he's a nice guy. Uh, don't you want Dwayne Johnson to knock off twenty five percent for you? With his Johnson. His and last name. I, I wouldn't prefer him to knock off anything if with his Johnson because I don't want to know. So I, you know, for this show, I try to do quizzes and find funny answers, and like I did one, and it wasn't that good. But like one, there had there was a mistake in the quiz that kind of was like, oh okay. <laughs> he just mentioned there that it was a five hundred percent tip, like mm. they paid like five times the amount they should have, or whatever, six times. Uh, the quiz said like how much of a tip did, did they leave, and then it was just like five hundred dollars. I'm like, yeah, I think it was a bit more than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much the best I could get. Well, well, the best I could get is the fact that uh, Reese is here. Reese is here. But really? No, oh. of course not. You're the worst aspect. Um, did you hear his whole rant about Asians? I mean, it was weird, uh, right? Uh, <laughs> but it's like, Damn. what do you think is holding back the rock? <laughs> because we didn't get to hear anyone else's opinion. Just Reese's big conspiracies. Yes, conspiracy. Well, I think the fact that I said earlier that. What other movies of his have I seen is that, uh... He just doesn't do memorable works. Yeah, I, I... That and the fact that I should probably just pay more attention to Dwayne. You should. I mean, he was in The Other Guys. He was really great in The Other Guys. Yeah, yeah he, he was really was, good. He was one of the... T one of Legend. the two guys that they liked. And right? you know what I love about that? Think about it deep down, right? That movie is funny because it's got Samuel Jackson and The Rock being, like, the typical... Heroic Legends, action stars, yeah. slash you know, douchebag, slash dude, but like basically, you know, the Danny Glover, the 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 you know Mel Gibson, the, the Schwarzenegger, Stallones, and all that. It's funny because Samuel Jackson has been in many big action movies like Die Hard Three, and on and on it goes. And then you get The Rock, who has not had that career-defining action movie, and especially not when the other guys came out, but. He gives you the idea that he could be that action star, and that's the joke in itself. But you don't think about it. Like, you don't think, hey, wait a moment. The Rock has never actually played any iconic character in action movies that his character is kind of spoofing on. But the Samuel Jackson has, and that's funny, but then you just see The Rock. Such a great actor. He makes you buy into anything. Humble. 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 He actually is. <laughs> I mean, have you heard about people wanting him to run for president? Really? People have said to him, Rock, you need to run for president. And all he says, all he has said is something like, you know, I don't mind the sound of it. <laughs> <laughs> Compare that to Kanye West, who said, I'm going to run for I'm president gonna run next time. I'm going to run next term. Would this movie have been better with a Kanye West soundtrack? Oh, no. <laughs> or maybe with a Kanye West lead? <laughs> what, as the girl? <laughs> I, was thinking, I was thinking as Dwayne, but yeah, as du maybe. No, you can't I can't really... imagine Wait, Kanye you... West as an action hero. You can't... Oh, I totally could. <laughs> could you imagine him in an action movie, but you just see, like, he grabs the camera and is like, FOCUS ON ME, damn it! <laughs> and that's and the action. <laughs> that's the action. It's him versing the director. I love it when, when celebrities talk about, like, things that they've heard Kanye West say in, like, private or, like, <laughs> when he wasn't as big and it always still sounds like... An egotistical maniac. Yeah. <laughs> like Dave Chappelle says this. Yeah, I think it was Dave Chappelle. But you know who isn't Dave Chappelle? The Rock. I don't know. I don't know, man. They look, pr they they look pretty close. Just because they're both dark-skinned guys. Yeah, exactly, over. exactly. Is that so, good enough? It, it's, no. It's unbelievable. Oh, just racist. I love the blue light in here. Like, yeah, it makes it so you can't shoot up heroin as easy. A clue, a clue. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Ryan, it's clearly a clue, isn't it? Okay, more, more blue. So, so here's something that really questions... This movie, I don't know about you guys, but it left you with a lot of questions throughout the movie because it's a kind of one of those typical movies in which is a mystery piece in which you don't really know what they're up to, you don't know why The Rock's helping them, you don't know anyone's real intentions, right? You don't know why the government is so evil. You don't know the story about their home planet, blah, blah, Yeah, we're however many ways through this movie, and... Yeah, we don't know. We don't know Dwayne's backstory, even. But what we do know is by the end of it, they all get answered, right? This doesn't get answered. No. Why it's... is this? Who put this here? What are these? Like, what's in the other goo thing? Yeah, I thought this was like yeah, this Ice was... Age 3 or something. This is kind of... It was kind of like a... Like, it needed a bit more time. It could have gone over the 90 minutes. It took maybe 100 minutes. So 10 minutes of just exposition. I help. see. No, I felt like when I entered this, I'm like, oh my god. Are they trying to make an alien terrain underground? Maybe. Ooh. But then I was wrong. It was just so that they could have the science thing here. Like, who made this? Like, her, her parents. Their parents are prisoners, yeah? Who did this? This reminds me of when we did Meet Dave, and then we talked at the end about how the people who made the movie had this whole, like, expanded universe idea of the planet that the guys came from. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, well... And this movie could have that. Maybe it's in the book. Maybe it's an escape to Witch Mountain or whatever. Mm. Well, it's not really an escape. It's... They're getting to it. So... Well, that's what they're saying in the title. By the way, guys, I, we've we've kind of missed something about this movie. What was the, what was the main character's name again? Jack Bruno. Was it? Yeah. Where, where's the evidence of that? Well, Sarah says <laughs> it multiple times. No, I don't think. I think the evidence, but excuse me, Reese, you're wrong. Uh, the evidence, Bartek, <laughs> is that one scene in which you got to see his ID for like two oh, seconds. Oh, that's right. That's the one time they tell us. He's okay. That his name is Percy Jones. Can we talk about the predator in the room? I mean, the, the, the alien in the room? Like, who's bigger than Dwayne Johnson? Well, is it, aren't we all bigger? Yeah, you know, fun fact, Dwayne Johnson's only four foot tall. So. It kind of <laughs> reminds, reminds me of Jason Voorhees in a way, and I'll tell you why, and later in the film, why it does. Is it because, because Dwayne Johnson... What? Dwayne Johnson wants to leech off the success of other movies to make Bill's career? Not necessarily. Because I haven't even seen Predator, and I thought Predator when I saw this. When I watched this in the cinema, I thought this guy was fucking awesome. I thought, like, no, I'd rather watch a movie about him and The Rock fighting it out on a space station or something. Good thing he's in the movie for most of it, right? Yeah, true. Yeah, he's my favourite. You know, no, he's not my favourite character, but... Damn like, it! What, Jack Bruno? No. <laughs> so, here's the thing, though. He's an assassin, right? And you think he's stealthy. His stealth tactic is to blow up the room that he is in. Like, he doesn't want to leave. Like, he's the last one to get out of the exploded room. In all fairness, she does throw a fireball at him, but his tactic was, I'm going to explode the room that I'm in, in hopes of killing them. And that is what care. we call a military genius, because here's the thing, Reese. Okay. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a similar, there's parallels between our government and their government in which the military are ruthless. You know, the federal agents in this movie yeah. want to dissect kids and kill the rock and all of this stuff, and their government sends this genetically bred creature to kill the kids. It's so interesting the social commentary that this movie is making yes. about the government. The Polish government. And then we the play Polish the X-Files theme. <laughs> the, the, the truth is out there. The truth. And this should have killed him, right? But the no. reason why he explodes the room he's in is because the helmet that he equipped himself with has a perk where fire damage is decreased by 100%. Oh, I thought you were going to say because the helmet he has is his fetish mask and the more pain he gets, the better he feels. Well, he, he gets hurt, but he, his his attack power goes up by 25%. You know, here's a real question. Does a genetically modified human have feelings? Yes, can. it can. a genetically modified human Look, I cry? Think, I think we know from Scooby-Doo 2 that the answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> and or AI. Yeah, you know... Why is it... Well, it's just, raining because it's, it's exploding from the sky. It's raining purple. It's not purple. <laughs> it's, pur it's purple! <laughs> Guys, it's, come on, just say it. It's <laughs> purple just, rain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of that and I said raining purple. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm this is just like when doves cry. <laughs> so this is when special effects are at their peak. <laughs> you know, uh, 
And here's the here's one of the many things that I think we need to talk about. The fact that that was a little red Corvette. No, little that red. this kid, uh, these kid actors. Do we know them from anything? I know Anna Sophia Robb. Oh, I don't. Who's she's from? She? Bridge from Terabithia. Oh, of course, another child. Was she the child? Yeah, she was. The was she the, I mean, the, the the girl? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Was she the child? Was she the bridge? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm a bridge. Yay! Was she the two? No, the... no. <laughs> was she Terabithia? <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in ages, but it was a good film. She does play a good bridge. Girl! Shut <laughs> up! <laughs> Calm down, Reese. So, I know the boy actor. What's his name? Um, Can't remember off the top of my head. It what was something name? like Ludwig is his last name or something. <laughs> no, I'm not joking, but um, he's Alexander in... or something. Alexander yeah. Ludwig. Uh, I think he, he's in Vikings, the TV show Vikings, oh, you know, okay. as the son of Ragnar, the grown-up son who can't act in that either. Fun fact. Oh. And here's the best part. I bring this up, Bartek, because I shit you not, he has the same haircut in this movie as he does in the 2016 series of Vikings. It's great. This kid, he, he plays this guy's a like Viking. This guy, no, no. Can you imagine? And he has that haircut. Yeah, he has that haircut. He's the best part. Can you imagine his contract? He's like, oh, I'll be in the movie. I'll be in the movie on the show, but I'm not changing my hair. <laughs> it's gonna be blonde. If he plays a Viking. Why can't he just have like a mohawk or something? Well, not he needs like a bowl haircut. A mohawk. A bowl. Yeah, a mohawk. A he needs a mohawk. To be a Viking? Yeah, I don't well, know. I mean, that's Reese. Just we, Reese also we, believes Asians are controlling I'm everything. Been, you, sorry, Reese. Hold Bye. on. Why did you say Mohawk? Because like they're Vikings, they would have like you Ooh. know different style haircuts. Wait, like, hold up for a sec. Say Mohawk. Mohawk. Okay, let's get some meaning out of this. So uh, he's uh, Mohawk because of uh, because they're heavy metal. Yeah, because Reese likes death metal. That's oh, <laughs> Reese is the Grim Reaper. <laughs> Reese is dying on the inside. Chop, chop, Reese is Whoopi chop. Goldberg. <laughs> chop it down. Chop. Chop, chop. So, Reese, do your Whoopi Goldberg impression. No, it's a good impression. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was thinking. Just edit it out, right? Edit it out. No, I'm gonna edit it longer. <laughs> okay. So, but like it's such a high pitch that no one can hear it. <laughs> oh yeah. So, he stops, and then he goes back. Why didn't he just keep going? If if I was an alien, I would go. Oh, they're definitely in that tunnel. I mean, because like you can just sort of see the cab with the light reflect. Yeah, you, you. But no. You guys have never played a video game. You have to be directly in the spotlight to be caught. Yep, I've played video games. Unless yep. you're in a box. I've played unless video you're, games. Unless you're Sully, <laughs> a Salid snake. So, Reese, this guy has the same haircut. Uh, yeah. Well, as I, he did I when he was like I, fourteen. I kind of agree with you with the fact that <laughs> it's sort of a. Silly idea for him to have that sort of a haircut when he's playing a Viking. Well, he it's have longer hair. Well, it's a know? distinct haircut, so people would recognize him. But when they see the haircut, they go, "Oh, it's 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 Seth from Race, Race to the Mountain. Mountain with the Rock." But Why wasn't the Rock in Vikings? Because he doesn't have that haircut. Oh, you got me there. Rock can't get a mohawk. His hair's too short. I've never seen a Rock with long hair. That actually, no, I haven't either. He's Shit. either like really. If you guys have photos of the Rock with long hair. Post it to our Facebook group. Have you ever seen Dwayne Johnson naked? No, no. who hasn't? It's just a rock underneath. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a lot about Dwayne that we don't know. Dwayne? Is he so I mean, look, we've seen Jackie Chan's art, so he could just. Yeah, so tell more. us about The Rock. Tell us more about his rock hard abs. <laughs> Alright, have you ever seen his thigh? Yeah, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. Maybe he doesn't have thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're just rocks. I think we have, because he was a wrestler in underwear. Well, I've seen his arms. Who hasn't? So he probably has arms. Here's the best part about this: they're going 140 miles an hour and they don't crash. This guy's the slowest reaction to imminent death. Uh, if I saw lights on the tracks at any point, I would just immediately. But he was like, yeah. "I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait this out." It was very smoky. <laughs> smoky. So, what do we think of the children? In this movie, do you think? Oh, Bartek great? brought up the point that what are their names? <laughs> yes, Seth, Sarah and Seth. Seth. They're very Seth alien. And Sarah. Oh, Seth, Sarah and Seth. Seth. They're very alien names. Are they? Well, Bartek. Yeah, absolutely. All aliens have names. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of Marvin the Martian? Oh, my favorite movie with Christopher Lloyd now. Yeah, Marvin the Martian. So, Miles Teller is in this movie, and he wants a gun. Like, that's... His character is wants a gun. 
the the head guy wants to kill aliens for an undisclosed reason, and also there's gangsters in this movie. Yeah, oh, they're yeah. like. The... Did you think we were gonna see Mr. Wolf at any point? No, I wanted to see Mr. Wolf actually, and it was just never... Harvey Keitel from Pop. That Fiction. would have made sense. That would have made a lot of sense, but they never. No, it did. was Bruce Cook. Oh. oh my god, how good would it be actually <laughs> like... if it was the federal agent? <laughs> I'm also a gangster. No, no, the one in this movie. He's also Mr. Wolf. Oh, the bad guy. The yeah, bad so boy. he can be like a double bad guy. Oh, yeah. But instead, he just wants to kill aliens for an unknown reason, which is... Well, know, we, get, we, get some, aliens. we get something close. I mean, Wolf It's like a type of dog. Oh, oh and yeah. he hates oh. dogs, yeah. Oh, uh, that was probably the best character in the movie. Scrapyard, wasn't it? Or junkyard, oh, yeah, scrapyard. junkyard, or junkyard. Wait, I thought it was it in Scrapyard. No, ja- junkyard. Junkyard Dave. Ja- yeah. ja- okay. Yeah. So again. he was the best character because he bit a guy, and then they were like, "Come with us," and Rock look after him. And this movie, at a point, he doesn't appear again. But then the girl said, "Look after junkyard for me," and there he is again. <laughs> Fun fact: This movie's actual message is look after junkyard dogs. <laughs> oh. So, did well, we the have... dog's named Junkyard. Yeah, but he was in a junkyard. Was he? I thought yeah. it was just in, like, a backyard. Oh, maybe it was a junkyard backyard. <laughs> maybe his real name's Backyard. Maybe his real name's Dog. Ah, <laughs> come here, dog. So, did we have a favourite character in this entire film? Um, I didn't have a single favourite character, but I had a favourite character stereotype. Go on. I like the sci-fi nerds. Oh, all of well, them? Yeah. What about you, Reese? Did you have a favorite character or character uh, type? I am going to reveal him when he comes on. Oh, he likes the men in the movie. <laughs> yes, but I like you, all the men in the movie. Because you said him. <laughs> uh, can I guess it? Yeah, go ahead. Is it, is it, is it um, old Gary? Yeah, it's old Gary. Gary Marshall. Yeah. Oh, you if, are, if I guys, had to pick a single one, yeah, I'd be the same. You want to guess my ca- ca- favorite character? It's always fun because whatever Reese well, is on, my say, favorite characters. Did you say it was Junkyard? No, he's a great character. Oh, uh, it's not the best. Um, so hold, you asked, do we want to guess your favorite character? Yeah. No. Fuck your <laughs> mum. So Reese, you want to guess? Uh, can I can I refer to another answer that's already been said? Yeah, go on. Bartek's answer, which is. No. No. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the sci-fi nerds. Well, so, okay, you know what? I'm going to try and guess it by the end of this movie so I can see all the extras in this film and then... <laughs> oh, it's not an extra. He's a real character but that has dialogue. Get, if you're going to spend the whole time guessing, Ryan's not going to be able to talk about them. Can yeah. I, I'm just going to tell you. I yeah. don't know how you guys did choose this. In fact, we haven't even talked about him. In fact, this movie is about his journey and how he only wants one thing. Which oh, is it's about a gun! <laughs> oh, no! What? He, the character wants a gun, and he finally No, it. it's about one man who owns a cab rank, and he wants his cab back right. from Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oh. Poor Dominic is just sitting there with the phone and eating food. He's crying over his cab. He's sitting there going, where's my cab? Dwayne the Rock Johnson's usually a pretty reliable guy, but no, I know no, he's no. in with these Jack gangsters. Bruno. Oh yeah, Jack Dwayne Rock Juno Bruno is in, and, and and now Cheech Marin's in the movie. Why not? And he's sitting there. You know what I was really expecting? Mm-hmm. I waited till the end of the credits. I thought it would be a great end credits scene in which he's still like there doing so, like Dominic's doing something. Like maybe he gets up. He's like, "That's it. I'm getting the cat myself," and he gets in a spaceship. Like. Plot twist. <laughs> he's actually an alien. He's, yeah, how he's, would that be? he's Mr. Wolf. Oh well. Oh, plot twist. He's Cheech Marin. Like no, no, you never see them in the same room. No, no, no. He's not Cheech Marin. He's Tommy Chong. Oh yes. Oh, well. oh how good would that have been actually? <laughs> the two mechanics. Oh, there's a big good bit of trivia coming up when they get in the restaurant. Is it that Cheech Marin's not in that scene? Incorrect. Is it the? Well, sheriff- it's actually correct. He's not in. Is that it scene. about the sheriff and the waitress? No, it's about the food. It's five stars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it's about the sheriff in the way. Stop ruining his moments, Bartek. We already slashed him apart for Asians. So what's your rating for this movie? <laughs> <laughs> so, Bartek, you had never seen the movie before. Did you know much about it? And what was your experience with the movie? To answer the first question, no. To answer the question about the experience, um... 
So I'd come back from my grandmama's birthday dinner. How old is she? Uh, she turned 69. Oh, that's She's pretty almost, young. almost 70, yeah. Pretty um, young for a grandma. Mm-hmm. And so basically I came home, it was like 9 o'clock, and I was like, okay, I have to watch this movie as soon as possible, because by the, by the time it ends, it's going to be like 10, 11, 30. And uh, so I was kind of in that mood of like, oh, I'm a little tired, but I'll watch the movie. Uh, and... Yeah, to, to go back to something Reese was saying, when he saw it in the cinema, like, the first part of the movie I wasn't really following too much, because it was a really... It was an opening credit sequence that gave you a lot of stimuli about... And I was, like, kind of finding the key points, like, okay, it's all about aliens, but it's going on for quite a while, and it wasn't until, like, four minutes in that we saw Dwayne Johnson and then the, the stormtroopers that come into his cab so i was like okay okay i'm starting to get into this movie a little bit more now because we have dwayne johnson and some geeks in the back that are talking about geonosians and planet hollywood so that was the beginning of the movie for me and the rest of it i was i was basically just seeing where it was going because i really didn't know anything about it well i, I knew that there were two kids in the movie but i didn't know that they were aliens and i like their performance was very interesting because usually when you have um Aliens. Like an alien or an android, the typical go-to thing, the stereotypical thing, which they kind of... There is the hero, movie. sorry, go on. Sorry? Sorry, the hero just turned up on screen. Oh, yeah, Tommy, go Tommy Chong. No, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> <laughs> What's he eating? Just pasta salad. I think that was cottage cheese. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it looks like potato salad or something. He just looks like he's just eating a bunch of cottage cheese. We're going... So, usually when you have an alien... <laughs> or an android the typical go-to thing is like that terminator robotic emotionless kind of thing but the two aliens in this movie they play it like very concerned almost the whole way through. yeah yeah because they're concerned they are very concerned they are incredibly about, about a, a very much a lot of thing thing yes <laughs> one thing yes Reese, everything. Do you remember the powers they have? Like, do you okay, remember so which she, one has which powers? She has telekinesis. Yes. The other one and mind reading. And Gosh, mind reading. You, and you ruined it. He's got to guess it for himself, and we tell him where he's wrong. I'm sorry. And the dude, Alexander Ludwig, has um. Yeah, keep guessing. Yeah, it's like he has super strength. Mm, no. Well, when he he stood in front of the car, he the car. has molecular density control, so he can phase through objects and make objects bounce off of him. But it's not like he will punch you and have super strength, uh, right? Because as we've seen, he can't even take out that hunt, hunter guy. So, she, but wait, that's their powers, right? Right. How come she has more powers than he does? Yeah, she's got like three. <laughs> she's got mind reading and mind reading, te telekinesis, and she can talk to animals. And animals, yeah. Oh, she can talk to animals. Maybe because so of tele a... te telepathy. Well, maybe like mm. his abilities cover a lot more than we think. <gasps> yeah, maybe he has a really big dick. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe on his. That's not something you, like you would say. But you said it. I'm Bartek maybe... now. Maybe... My name is Bartek. Fuck off. Hey, that's not my last name. It's Mackenzie. <laughs> yeah, my maybe, name is Reese Casper. Maybe on his planet, that's a very useful everyday thing to have, so it kind of balances out. Maybe. Like on our planet, you know, it'd be really cool to have these tele uh, suffix powers and talking to animals. Whereas moving through things, you know, unless you're in prison, like when are you ever going to use that? Or maybe if you want to go into the girls' locker room or something. Like maybe that. it's a boy-girl gender thing. Maybe boys have that power and girls have those powers. So like a more, I almost said practical, but more like physical powers versus yeah, yeah. physiological like thing, mindish powers. Like girls are born. Uh, you know, it's a typical thing. You always think women oh, are from Venus, boys are from Mars. Mars. Mares. Yes, Mares. women are from Venus, boys are from Omicron um, Percy, yeah, 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 on it goes. So, the the Rock, his character's name is Jack Bruno, in case you didn't know. Um, did you know his name is Jack Bruno? You know, you know, what? Like, you know what I would know? His last name, his middle name, by the end of the movie. I was actually really concerned that his he middle, may not have had a middle name. His middle name is Percy Jones. His middle name is Brew. <laughs> his last name is No. Is he related to the Doctor? Oh, Doctor No? 
No. Dr. Brew? No. Dr. No. I said Dr. No, and you're like, no. No. You. You. He's not. He's not white enough. Dr. No. Dr. No. Oh, uh, yeah. Interesting fact about the sheriff. Um, not... I, like, I ma- made the point before that, like, he's from the original. He plays you the original. You haven't, so oh. now you have. Uh, now I have, and the waitress. But they misspelled him in the credits. Why? What? What did they misspell him as? Well, his name is Ike. But they they called Mike. They, no, they said I A K E. Ike. Ike. <laughs> My favorite actor is Ike. <laughs> Wait, I A K E? No, I A K E. So they just added that. That's Iak. Iak. Ike. 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 Get away, Ike. Welcome to Spin Polish, in which we make noises. <laughs> noises! Ridiculously you... good noises! <laughs> oh, fuck, don't, don't do your Billy Connolly. Do your Citizen Kane. I'm do... sorry. What's the context of my Citizen Kane impression? Uh, this that this is the movie he, uh, Orson Welles wished he had made. Okay. <laughs> Man, I read on the YouTube video that Orson Welles had this quote that was all... Something about... Oh, I wish I made Race to Witch Mountain, also known in Polish as um, Gura Czarownica, and also that one time Bartek called it Race do Witre Moantine. Fun fact, one of the reviews that I did not include, unfortunately, had, I do believe, the Argentinian uh, title version of this, which roughly translated into something like the, the... What was it? It was... The running to bewitched mountain. <laughs> uh, well, the, the translation for Gura Chadovnica is literally like mountain witch. I knew but that, like, but like belonging to the witch. Oh, so witch is mountain. I can't basically. wait for the reviews. <laughs> um, so and don't forget, I brought something as nothing well. Nothing says appropriate like blonde-haired, blue-eyed, scary children commanding a person of color to do their bidding. Ooh. Did you read the racial undertones? No, I did not read that. Do you want to read them now? Oh. <laughs> Reese, basically they're saying, Black, go to the camp. Wow. Oh. That's appropriate because we're Polish, so we can say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll just I'll just say here. Yeah. Dog gra- See, it's a backyard. No, but we don't see what's in the other part of the backyard, do we? Yeah. There might be junk <laughs> in the yard. A yard, backyard with junk. See, yard there's, with junk. there's another caravan. It's like that whole argument. He's not my boyfriend. He's a friend and he's a boy. <laughs> See, look, there's junk. Aww. I really thought that when the dog went silent, she just closed its mouth. <laughs> it's like, shut up. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wish there was more movies kind of like Chronicle in which people used powers realistically. Yeah. Like, if I was that guy, if I was her, I would have just done what you just said. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your mouth, doggy! <laughs> Poor Cheech Marin. He probably even didn't even get to change anything. They were gone for like half an hour and he's just like, uh, uh, I didn't do anything. To be fair, the taxi's got like two scenes left. No, it's got more. They're Remember drive... Gary Marshall uses yeah, it. Yeah, they're gonna drive to Planet Hollywood and then Gary Marshall uses it. Also, what is it with everyone going to Planet Hollywood in this movie, right? There's no other locations for The Rock to go to? What is this? Dis- discounts for film crews, maybe. Okay. What is this, Hollywood? What is this, a planet? What is this, planet Hollywood? What is this, sweetheart? Come on. So, Spit and Polish presents, brought to you by Planet Hollywood. <laughs> Spit and Polish, brought to you by... Spread Butter. <laughs> I can't believe it's not Planet Hollywood. <laughs> so I was going to say things more inappropriate, but I said butter instead. Can you explain <laughs> to me, Reese, what he wants? He wants. Yeah, what he wants. Him, not not everyone else. Specifically him. What's his character uh, goal? What's his intention? What the is villain he... for people not watching. Okay. So They're I th- watching. I think he wants to dissect these two specific aliens because they want to study them for some reason. What's the reason? Give me a minute, folks. I'll just be here thinking about that. I, I don't Look, know. Look, I think a few minutes ago Ryan was on the ball. You go on. Nazis. <laughs> he's Hitler. But he's, he's, he's Hitler, obviously, and he Ooh. wants blonde-haired, blue-eyed children to make his master race. Oh, he wants Aryans. Okay, fine. Oh, you only just got that now. But he's like, he's like Hitler who doesn't want to punish bad people. He wants to get good people. He's like Santa. 
Like Santa, <laughs> Santa Hitler. Santa Hitler. <laughs> Adolf Nothing Claus. says. Oh. No- I- Wow. Nothing says anything like Fuhrer Claus. Yeah. <laughs> his, his, arch, his arch enemy is his cousin, a uh, Scottish crippled Hitler. Yeah, Rob Schneider. You know, all the way back from episode six. So, here's the thing. What is his intent? What's his plan? So, Reese got there a little bit. Bartek, do you think you could pick up the ball? Like, legitimately. What do you, do you understand his plan to be? Not to say that he's a badly written character or anything like that. He's but a great written character. I think it's just playing on that whole idea of the... Uh, we mentioned before this movie has like some socio-political undertones. He's very much on that whole racist immigration guy. I like the fact he's not even racist. He's just like, they don't have passports and that's enough. Yeah, but... I can do whatever I want. But they're clearly outsiders in a Mm. country illegally. So it's kind of playing on that whole thing. Um, Do you ever wonder how these movies would be different if they were set in somewhere else? Like, oh, I don't know, Liverpool in England or something? Like... How this movie would be if it wasn't in modern day America? Well, there'd be soccer hooligans in every couple of scenes. <laughs> yeah. So, what is his plan, though? Um, he. Doesn't he kind of just want to protect the world by. Killing aliens? Killing aliens, and it's kind of like that whole single minded kind of thing? Well, yeah, but no. See, here's the thing, right? Washington's hired him, yeah? And yeah. at the end, he does talk to his boss on the phone to explain what's gone wrong and earlier he talks to his boss to be like yeah this makes up for all those other times we failed failed what what did they fail i don't understand but here's what i can gather from the great film we've got Mm. i think what they're trying to do is dissect aliens to figure out how they have their powers so that they can be applied to humans because there's no reason they would just dissect them just for whatever they know that these people have powers they know that these aliens have this and they want to open up the spaceship to gain technology usually with these government types it's usually to benefit and uh advance technology and the human race in some way or form right so obviously the spaceship they want to open it so that they can get more space tech right obviously but they want to dissect these aliens from what i can gather for their power to understand how they use their powers because this girl even says you guys have the ability, but you don't know how to use it yet. Oh, uh, I, I have a... Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Um, I don't know. I have a different theory. Go uh, on. I think... <laughs> oh, please, let me let me guess what it is. What? The government guy knows the kid has a big dick, and he wants to figure out how he can get a no, big dick. No, no, Ryan. It's not that dirty. <laughs> oh, wow. No, it's not yeah. that dirty, Ryan. Go on. He wants to be popular on MTV. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let you... me decipher. No, this. don't. Oh, all right. I think what he's trying to say is, in this generation, MTV is the big number one dog, and this guy wants to be the number one dog. And if you're gonna be number one, you're gonna be on MTV. Look, at this point, Ashton Kutcher wasn't doing punked anymore, so he thought I could do it with aliens. Punked, except I killed you. So he gets them strapped on the table, and then he leaves them for a bit, you know, scaring them, and then they're gonna start some experiments, and then he comes in, it's like, you got punked, aliens! I like, uh, this guy with the glasses. But the whole idea- sorry, I'm- You go on. Because he failed multiple times before, every time some ex-wrestler saves the aliens before he can say, you got punked. Yeah, last time it was, <laughs> last time it was, uh, the, the Hulk Hogan, and after The Rock, he's gonna try again, and there's only one person who can stop him, and that person is John Cena! Da, 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 da. John Cena's yeah. the only guy who can save the day. Actually, Race to well, Witch Mountain 2 needs John Cena. Actually, it's gonna be, uh, the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah? Cool. Wow, that was a big twist. Just like I thought it was going to be like, oh, the only Ryan's one who thinking can about dicks, and I'm talking about MTV here. What am I Come talking on. about? Uh, say a word. Blue. Okay, fair enough. He's talking about Paul Giamatti and Big Fat Liar. Oh. Case closed. Oh. So <laughs> here's the thing. He wants up. to harness their powers, right? But the doctor literally says. We have to wait at least 34 to 72 hours before we can start the process. And he goes, not good enough. Do it now. And they're like, okay. Like, why is it such a rush? 
They've already got the guys that they need. Nobody's going to stop them. Did they, because, Why do they need to do it right now? They don't, they don't even know that the alien bounty hunter exists. Because the oppositional wrestler of the day is going to stop them again. Yeah, he knew that. I really want to know who his boss was. Yeah. That wasn't, it, wasn't it implied to be the president? Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It kind of would have been nice to actually see who the shadowy figure boss was and kind of be like, wouldn't it be cool if they... Who would play the boss? Mr. Like, Wolf. <laughs> Your favourite character. Marty, Marty Wolf. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. No, I was talking about the wolf in this movie. I know. So, if you had to cast an extra character to be the head government shadow figure, maybe president or whatever, who would you cast, Reese? Who would be a perfect person to be in this movie that isn't? As a bad guy. I would cast... A fart. Okay. Uh, well, no, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, think with your brain. Just say Jerry Lewis. No, I can't say Jerry Lewis. He's too kind. Jerry Seinfeld? No, I can't say What's Jerry... the deal with aliens? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the president. <laughs> and Artistic then, integrity. And then Kramer just comes oh, to oh, the oh, Oval oh. Office. I've got it. Scott Glenn. <laughs> Which one's Scott Glenn? You, you don't know Scott Glenn? Okay, remind me. Uh, remind Silverado. Me. Uh, Freedom Riders. Uh, Silverado. Oh, Silverado. We all know that one. I can't think. Of, I, I just would think Scott Glenn because he's like the typical. I think like your Sam Shepard type. Of oh, guy. yeah, with a mustache. Or... Yeah, yeah. But it's like, who would you have as Shrek? I knew it. Chris Farley himself before he died. Yes. I would have. Someone completely like out of left field. Voltorb. No, no, a real person. Okay. Wouldn't it be a plot twist if it was a woman and it was actually just Catherine Zeta Jones? <laughs> because, oh, hello, darling. And she's just like, and she's like really like like old looking. Like they've old made her look old, and she's like smoking a cigarette, and she's just like, what? I don't like these aliens. <laughs> what about Gina Rollins, maybe? What about Gina Reinhardt? <laughs> what about Gina Davis? What about Amelia Earhart? No. <gasps> oh. Wait, we're getting it wrong. The only person who could be in this is Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> and he's just like, uh, uh, you know what they say. I've uh, already uh, said Jerry Lewis. Life, life uh, uh, prevails. <laughs> life uh, finds... Life prevails! Fi life finds... <laughs> Whoa, Whitey! <laughs> And he does that. Why? How good would it be if it was Adam Sandler as the president? <laughs> as as what, Opera Man. It has to be an animated character, so why? <laughs> it, it's, what about just Wile E. Coyote? Just like silently mapping his Why? Foul. Do you find it annoying at no point did they actually tell The Rock any of this? <laughs> like, this is him fighting out for the first well, time what the plot is, which is basically their planet's dying, they did scientific test here, but... Because mm. Seth has trouble trusting him. Yeah, Seth's a bit of a dick, isn't he? Yeah, Seth, I... What's Seth's problem? Why does he have he, so many trust he, issues? He just doesn't like humans. He's a Nazi. Yeah, he's a racist. I love how the rocks are... Hey, some of my best friends are human. Aliens, Unlike his aliens other friends. Aliens aren't a race. <laughs> his other friends... His other friends aren't humans. I like the idea that the Rock is in this movie in the middle of the desert. He drives. He drives his cab all the way to the middle of the desert just to find his friend who's a vulture from I'll Be Home for Christmas. And he was like, "There you are, buddy. Why are you got a Christmas hat on?" And then they did both he, go on an adventure. Did he break up with his girlfriend, the Vulture? Of course. And the rock's getting him laid again. It's called <laughs> rock man. Rock it's, man. It's called it's called how the vulture got his groove back. <laughs> and, it's a, and the poster is the rock with his hand on his hip, with his hip popped out, and his other arm holding a vulture on it, and he's got like this sussy look like girlfriend and I'd watch that. Sponsored by Pokemon Go. <laughs> no, it's Sponsored by... I can't believe Nestle. it's not butter. <laughs> Nestle chocolate. Sp why? Because he's the colour of chocolate? You racist? Uh, <laughs> the vulture I'm talking about. Oh, oh well, Sponsored yes. Sponsored by Kevin Rowe. And that's the director there. Told to shut up. <laughs> why, hello, I th Did you think that this guy was actually Harlan? When they walk up to him and they're talking to him and like, is that Harlan? Like the guy that the she's opposed to. Did you think that this nerdy guy was Harlan? No. Really? 
Yeah. I did last night, and I've already seen the movie. I was like, I don't remember this guy being Harlan. Maybe he is. <laughs> I don't remember this guy being Harlan. <laughs> he reminds me of William H. Macy from Old Dogs. Really? Oh, I, yeah, I remember that one. Oh, but... <sighs> everyone remembers Old Dogs. Can't get did it I say Old head. Dogs? I meant Wild Hogs. Wild Hogs. Everyone remembers Wild Hogs. Can't get it out of their heads. Too Harlan. Similar, two similar, very unusual titles. Well, so Same director, Reese. Government Lies, Alien Truths. So at the... You know, with with this uh, movie, Bartek, w- since you had never seen it before, we saw it in cinema, still fresh perspective, and I can gather from where, you, where you're talking, you really love this movie. No writers. Reference to Wild Hogs. Oh, yeah. So, why do you think that this movie just didn't make it? Why do you think this movie isn't one Gary! of the classics? It's got everything going for it. It's got humor it's got good acting good direction good action sci-fi elements that really work gary. a poster of andre rio was there in the background i mean gary it's got gary marshall in it who's a claimed director and actor and happy days creator could have had gary the snail from spongebob oh i could have had gary the snail damn um i guess it really just kind of jumps back to um uh, that idea of the star Dwayne Johnson, you know, a lot of people like him, and I'm sure a lot of people saw this movie for him at the time. Mm. I, mean, I know when, I did. When did he, like, stop wrestling and start doing movies? Uh, probably early 2000s. Early 2000s. Oh, wow, that long. Yeah. Has he been an actor longer than he has been a wrestler? Yes. If it's early 2000s, I'd imagine. Yeah. So. How long do the wrestlers last? As long Max, as they want to. Yeah, I mean, you know, Hulk Hogan still fitness. goes back. Oh, I still guess, goes back. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess if the like they're scripted to like stay or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's scripted. Yeah. Next week, Hulk Hogan returns <laughs> in <laughs> WrestleMania. <laughs> Little did we know that they were the original Marvel franchise, <laughs> WWE. Wasn't there a trivia point about Marvel in this in, for this movie? Like some one of the aliens has like the powers of some Marvel. Oh, characters? of oh, uh, the the boy has the same powers as the Vision from Marvel. What? The boy has yeah. the exact same powers as the Vision from Marvel, which is... Oh, Paul like Bettany. It. Okay. No, the Vision. Not Paul Bettany. The Vision. Oh, Tobey Maguire. <laughs> oh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. No, Paul Bettany is... See, Plays Reese. Vision. Right, Reese. Let me explain to you, Bartek. Hold on your seat. Paul Bettany is an actor, you right. see. Yes, he plays pretends him. to be people for an a living. He's not actually the vision. He just pretends to be the vision. There's right. no actual vision. You see, Wait, magical powers on. aren't real. Hold on a second. If that's true, then why haven't we seen Tobey Maguire in ages? He's clearly on top of... He like... was in The Great Gatsby, thank you. But no, he's... And Porn Sacrifice. He's clearly in a roof. Like hanging out with spider webs. Well, you know, sometimes the actor becomes the create creation. Okay, so it's not it's not a like solid concrete fact that no, it's people a fact. pretend to be others. Well, no, he's pretending to be Spider Man, but since there is no Spider Man, he technically is Spider Man. Hang on, why do they call him Jack Bruno? If his name is Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Well, I'm glad you said that. See, during the filming of this movie, Rock changed his name to Jack Bruno. Oh, legally. I get it now. I get it. Maybe oh, that's why the movie flopped. It was titled method. Jack Bruno as Jack Bruno. And it, everyone's like, I thought the Rock was in this. So he's playing himself? What? Method, well, technically, the method Rock's a cat acting. driver. Method acting. That explains everything to me now. So you were saying... The movie didn't work because people like The Rock too much? <laughs> I, I think it's because, yeah, they like The Rock too much, but did The Rock do enough yeah. in this movie? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Did he? He carried this movie on his big, broad shoulders. Look at them shoulders. Look at those Gary Marshalls. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think he did. You know what I think? really was a detriment of this film? You, the audience, where were you in 2009? Too busy waiting for Iron Man 2 to be released? Get your shit together! Disney made a great film called Race to Witch Mountain and nobody saw it! And now The Rock is spinning in his soon-to-be grave! Ryan, I have I have the answer why this film didn't do so well. Is it because there wasn't enough Star Wars references? Can you say no. it in one word or less? I can say it in one word. 
<clears throat> okay, can... let's see what that means. <clears throat> it could be anything. Oh. <laughs> I think Reese is horny. <laughs> <laughs> I know he is. It's bumping me in the that, leg. That's why I'm sitting so close to the table, yeah. Um, Avatar. Avatar? Avatar. Avatar. How much uh, did that bloody film Nickelodeon? Gross? <laughs> <laughs> How much did that movie gross? I don't think M Night Shyamalan really could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a twist. Uh, <laughs> you gotta make a sequel. Look, I didn't make an account on RuneScape. I didn't make an Avatar, so you know. Yeah. How many, so, more, how many more avatars? Wait, <laughs> I think he might be talking about the James Cameron Pocahontas movie. Yes. You remember Avatar? <laughs> Oh, with the with the blues clues. Yes, yes, the blues clues people. Yes, yes, dances with Smurfs. Yeah. yeah. So that because of that, no other movie. I guess you know sci-fi. That movie had Sigourney Weaver in it. This movie has The Rock. That also too similar. <gasps> to, uh, and this movie has a character whose full name is constantly said. That movie has Zoe Saldana, who is in a movie where a, a her dad's name <laughs> is constantly said. That movie has Zoe Saldana. This movie has The Rock, who I think would be great paired with Zoe Saldana. Yes. They would make a great couple in a movie, which I think we would entitle Race to Avatar Mountain. <gasps> and the villain of this movie wants to be the next Ashton Kutcher. That movie had Ashton Kutcher. What? Uh... What? Oh, oh, guess who? But Avatar, oh. Avatar did not have Ashton Kutcher. But it did have Sam Worthington, who wishes he was Ashton Kutcher. And we don't see Sam Worthington anymore, but we do see Ashton Kutcher. So, there you go. And Sam Worthington <laughs> is a name just like, like Eric <laughs> Foreman. Which is from that 70s show which has Ashton Kutcher in it. Oh, there you go. Nailed it. Wow. We figured out the conspiracy. <laughs> Best you, convention done. ever. So... Randomly, I discovered that this alien race or this specific creature has like the predator. What? The predator has like three fingers, and it's like a thumb. It's like I thought two he... fingers and a thumb. Yeah. Oh, it's two fingers. Sorry, two fingers and a thumb. Oh, I was very disconcerted by that. Yeah, very I'm good. Like... Very good. They didn't have four. It would have so been Japan very difficult. Uh, yeah? yeah. Yeah, I think in Japan, not only is white death, four is also death. Well, so they don't like it when animated things have four fingers. I've got a stuff. question: How many people in Hollywood look like Miles Teller, other than Miles Teller? Because we've done Band Slam, the main guy looked like Miles Teller in this, and this agent guy that wants a gun looks like a Miles Teller copy. How many Miles? Here's the question: Was Miles T is Miles Teller even real? Is he in fact like a Hollywood? test tube baby and they keep trying to pump new ones out and none of them work until they finally got one like they exterminate them after they fail okay well okay look reese and i have been very kind we haven't been saying anything but you know you've just kept bringing it up what what is this miles teller you're talking about what do you mean miles it, we've teller never heard of this miles teller you know miles teller the actor no you don't know miles teller but reese you don't know miles teller either i i do? No, you don't. I don't know. Uh, surprisingly, I don't know Miles Teller, right? I'm Miles Teller. Are you? No! You keep talking about it like it's a thing we should know. No. I, I don't. Miles Teller's a great... He was in the Van Forstick movie. as Mr. Fantastic. Uh, oh, I know that one. Fantastic, I don't know what Sorry, you're this improvisation to... thing's just not working. <laughs> I don't oh, know oh, what I... you're trying to do to me. You're trying oh, to sorry, tell me that Miles just... Teller's not real? Thanks, Reese. Miles Teller's real? What was the aim of that? To try and make me believe Miles Teller doesn't exist? Yes. Guess you what? You kept bringing it up. Guess what? I've met Miles Teller because I am Miles Teller. Deep down, aren't we all Miles Teller? This is why I didn't do drama. Because <laughs> I couldn't do improv. So, fun fact, Miles Teller exists. Yes, he does. <laughs> and he's in this movie. No, you interrupted what I was saying, which was, I think there's a Hollywood mafia that grows Miles Teller clones, and they keep pumping each one into a different movie until one of them has the charm and success that they need, and in between waiting for that one, they just kill the other ones. 
and they all kind of look different, you know, they're all like, maybe this Mars Teller needed to be a bit chubbier. Maybe this Mars Teller needed to be have a bigger nose, you know, maybe. This Mars Teller needed glasses. Maybe this Mars Teller needed to know how to drum. <gasps> That's it! <laughs> Guys, a certain character has just left the movie. Oh, Gary. Dignity. No, the taxi. Oh, the taxi. <laughs> no, we see it at the end. We do? The character has left the movie. We, never we see saw the taxi at the end, but then it pulls away and he's got his Mustang. Taxi's gone. <laughs> Let us see it again. Ah. Uh, so, we haven't even talked about her, really. Well, she's finally back, so we could. What do you think of her? Um, she's strong. She's got three older brothers. <laughs> Reese has an older brother. I have a younger brother. And you have an older sibling. Yeah, sister. Can, like, fuse them or something. <laughs> and Together, they, they make three older... Three, oh, no, no, they don't make three. Together? Wait. They're you're old. a brother. I'm an older I'm brother. I'm a brother. <laughs> Reese is a brother. I've got a sister who's older. Combine that together and we're three brothers of my sister somehow. So we know. could be her brothers and we teach her to fight somehow. Even though she's older than all of us. Yeah. Oh, so you guys have older siblings. Do you fight them? Physically? All the time, obviously. Uh... That's why I've only got one eye. Reese doesn't want to incriminate himself. Well, no. <laughs> he, killed his, he killed his brother. Yes, I killed my older brother. With smiles. He killed his older brother, Reese, spelt R E. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is. And double S. And now he. Rest. And now he is the only Reese left, which is spelled with R H. Jonathan Reese Myers is dead. Reese Witherspoon is dead. Reese Ifan is dead. Reese from Malcolm in the Middle is Reese dead. Reese from Malcolm in the Middle is dead. What about Reese from my fan fiction? He's dead too. Shit. What about Reese McKenzie? He's gonna die. Yeah. You... After what he said about the Asians at Control oh! Hollywood, they're never gonna let him Wait, go. Wait, Reese, are you going to die, Reese? No, he's gonna... Oh. Die, die, Reese? Are you gonna die, Reese? Yeah, I'm gonna die as Reese. No, he... So you are going to die, Reese? No, I'm going to die as Reese. Yeah, so you're gonna die him? No, I'm gonna die as... <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> My name when I die will be Reese. Yes, Bartek. <laughs> so you... Reese McKenzie are gonna die, Reese. Yes, I'm gonna die. <laughs> what, is, what is die, Reese? Am I missing something here? You're missing your die, Reese. What? <laughs> my, 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> you're gonna die him. I'm, you're gonna die me. <laughs> He's gonna. You're gonna die him. <laughs> Who's what? You're gonna die me. Okay, hang on. So welcome to spin polish presents. <laughs> die, Reese. Die, no, Reese. Am I Did gonna, you know that we okay, die, Reese? Am I gonna like dye my hair when I die or something? I don't. What? No. What are you worried about, Reese? Doesn't it make complete sense. Keep die, Reese. Dye my hair. Yes. I'm, I, you I am brought up die. hair, Reese. What point, what point do we bring up hair? Okay. So as I understand it, Bartek says I will die as Reese. Yes, I will die as me, and I will die. Yes. Bartek, explain it to him. Jeez, he's not getting it. <laughs> Look, you're Reese, right? Yes. Yes. You are going to make it so that Reese dies. You're gonna die, Reese. Yeah. Oh. I'm. Wait. No. You're gonna die, Reese. Yeah, I'm gonna die. Yeah. Well, but you're gonna die, Reese. Is die, Reese, a word or is it two words? Die, it's, it's Reese. It's two words. It's oh. die and Reese. Okay. You're gonna die, Reese. I thought you. I thought they were like. Um. I thought you was like saying one word As in together die the action no i was gonna i thought it was like reese you do know that die is a verb right yes you're gonna I, die reese ha hang on i thought die reese was one word and i didn't know what this word meant no fun fact die reese is an actual <laughs> word that we made up on spin polish it, it's the trademark okay i'll to be fair it's the pool it's the plural of diary but that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, diaries! Oh! That's not what I'm talking about, though. <laughs> He's not talking about that. Did you not hear him? He's not talking about that. Okay. God, get it together, Reese. <laughs> die, Reese, die. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you were talking about, like, no, I'm no, gonna fairness. die as Reese, not as someone <laughs> else. The, I... At the end of this, I no longer know what the words die or Reese <laughs> mean. <laughs> So, you know, that started really innocently. I just wanted to replace the word kill with die, and then I realized that I was making a statement about what's going to happen one day. Don't, don't, don't peek too <laughs> far behind the curtain of your own brilliance. That took too long for me to get, <laughs> wouldn't you? I don't know if I get it, but, you know, <laughs> I don't want to brag. So, this is the point in which you think, oh, The Rock's the jerk in the movie, right? Well, is he? We don't know. I guess we have to die Reese. Jeez! <laughs> Look, you Never can't. Let it die. You can't squeeze water from a rock. Yes, you can. If it's raining, yeah. 
Mm. You, you squeeze it to get the water off? No, oh, I... you lick it. I licked the rock all the time. What does it taste like? It tastes good. <laughs> I've realized what, what I've are the ju- muscles I've like? realized what I've just said, and I will absolutely take it back, Bartek. Sorry. sorry. No, we're gonna soundbite that you... shit. So <laughs> I have no idea what is going on. No, you uh... said squeeze, and I thought, oh, I know you can't squeeze a rock. I can't. Yeah, it's a saying. You can't squeeze blood from a rock or whatever. You know they say you can't squeeze diarrhea, and you know what it goes. I mean, never let it go. So the rock, you think, is a jerk, right? But he's not, because the rock has a heart down there, underneath his rock. Which you can squeeze. Yes. Which you can <laughs> squeeze, and he will die. Ladies. One of my favourite jokes about The Rock is, uh, from Fast and Furious, someone's got a scene where Vin Diesel walks over and lifts him up. And it's like, oh, when you find your f- when when you find your favourite rock and add it to the collection, and he just, like, it's him walking over and picking him up. It's like, ah, oh, yes. That's very good. I'm a rock. Is is it different because he's the rock? Like you can't be a rock. You you know like as special as a rock. Look, let's just se- I'd say you're more special. Let's just sell this rock. right now. Who would win in an arm wrestling contest? Dwayne the Rock Johnson or Geo Dude? I think I would. Question. <laughs> yes. Who's Geo Dude? From it's, Pokemon. It's a Pokemon. It's a rock with two. Oh, I think Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Why not Geo Dude? Because he's got Dude in his name. Because I I like Dwayne. But Geodude has a defense stat of like 100. Yeah, but I think... I don't even know if that's true or not. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think the real winner is Magic Cup. The Rock has heart. Because he uses Splash. Magic Cup, not The Rock. But nothing happens. You know what's not happening? A lot in this movie right now. And there's a reason for that. This is what we call the start of the climax in which you think the heroes have lost, but no. No, no, no. No. And you think the villains have won, but no. The plot twist has to happen. The plot is about to twist, which is the fact... It's not Miles Teller, it's Jonah Hill. Plot twist. It's not Miles Teller, but it's actually Jonah Hill. He looks like Jonah Hill. Does he? Especially when he's got that helmet thing on. I guess it's... Some people look like Jonah Hill when they wear a helmet. Did you know that, Reese? No, I did not. I guess the mask would be... Headpiece. When he's got that headpiece on. So... So. So, so. So, so. So... So? Yeah. So. so, 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 so. So, so. Brought to you by so. Uh, <laughs> so? Brought to you by sewing. Sewing. Nip, nip, nip. Well, The Rock is... In a pipeline. In Far out. <laughs> and he's going to... A plus, Reese. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to need a plumber to get that out. <laughs> I'm not I'd watch, watch a movie in which, you know, these scenes, someone gets trapped or dies in one of these vents or something. He gets killed. Yeah, he yeah. gets killed. He <laughs> dies, Reese. Yes. So, <laughs> he, he, they die in the pipeline. He gets killed. And it's a movie about the the repair man that has to go in there mm. and get them out, mm. like these bodies. And it's actually like this really intense, like horror thriller. But it's about like a repair man trying to fight his way out from whatever killed these people in the tube. You know, make that movie better. If it had Paul Giamatti. What's a what's that really good movie which has a scene, just or maybe just a shot set in a pipe? The Poseidon Adventure. No, nah, it's one of the ones with the highest IMDb ratings. The Fugitive. Oh. No. Guys, it's the Shawshank Redemption. Oh, oh. if he was filled with poops. Yes. So you could have instead of making it like a horror thriller, you could just make it a spin-off of that really popular movie. To get where the, the rocks movie. in the same prison? <laughs> where, no, no, no. Where the where the cleaner guy goes into that pipe and says there won't be any shit left here. <laughs> and because that movie has a really high rating on IMDb, that one will surely get a big audience. Oh, wow. Well. It would be great if it's, like, the alternate version of the ending where he didn't get out of the pipe, he got trapped and died, and he's in there just he... going, Poor old Tim Robbins! Then you hear Morgan Freeman just narrate, He and he never got out of that tube. <laughs> <laughs> he discovered that he's a scat file. Scat-a-file. He discovered, and that's when he discovered that it took eighteen hours to die from poop ventilation. Oh, he shit. wasn't into golden showers, nor was he into brown showers. He was into brown baths. Brown baths. Yeah. I thought you were gonna be like, My he wasn't into golden Andy. showers, but he was into shit jacuzzis. And then the next day, <laughs> I fucked him. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Andy was a sick fuck. Because, because Morgan Freeman's black. Wow, he's Irish in that movie, if you do remember. <laughs> yeah. Do I Morgan Freeman? 
Was that your Morgan Freeman as Irish? <laughs> yeah. Morgan Freeman. Okay. All Irish Morgan. people sound like that. And all uh, have high-pitched voices, too. And they are little. <laughs> and they have a rainbow. Don't you remember the part where Morgan Freeman was, like, let out of the prison, and then they're like, wait, you forgot something. And then I don't like, remember that in Race to Witch Mountain. And then they put a <laughs> leprechaun hat on him. Fair and, enough. And then he was talking about, I'm not really happy out in this world, but at least I have my leprechaun hat. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the brilliance of this movie Reese. what do you think is one of the brilliant things that's within this movie what do you think is something that really stands out as a moment of cinematic achievement and brilliance um it's straightforwardness this scene oh this scene oh sorry um I wasn't answering for you but I'll just stop interpreting <laughs> what Barsic <laughs> says <laughs> Bartek's full of doo-doo, I tell you. He's full of Andy DeFrame. Okay, so, what is good about this scene? Okay. I didn't mean what's good about this scene. I just asked you, what is a moment in this movie that's really good? And Bartek's just like, this scene. As in, for him, it's this scene. <laughs> and apparently, Reese just thought, well, I have to talk about this scene now. <laughs> You fucking idiot. <laughs> Fun hey. fact, we studied film. <laughs> and he's doing a bang right, up he did a good job. He didn't have a degree in 2009. He didn't even know me in 2009. We like, went the next year. Didn't we know each other all the time in 2009? That I, was a time I, in which nobody could get away from Reese and I other. met in 2010. Mm-hmm. We saw I met the, in 2014. Man. We saw The Hurt Locker. And yeah. it was okay. No oh, idea was it, good I know I'm straight. We saw that too, yeah. I Fun fact, like... I didn't see any of these things with these people because I was too busy at the cinema. Race to Witch Mountain. And don't you like how this works as a technique? Can I borrow your pen? Not Like, <laughs> wait, who are you? Big liked... muscly dude covered in dirt and grime. I like that gag because I wasn't expecting it. I have three older brothers. <laughs> Character done. And he's like, damn, he, she must. Wouldn't it be a plot twist if her three older brothers were like weaker like m- really little weak people like one of them Steve Buscemi and like the like, uh, one of them is Bruce Cook <laughs> one of them is Bruce who's no. this Bruce Cook I don't know he's in Thunderpants the main character in oh, Thunderpants the main actor and no wouldn't it be great if our three older brothers were like really lame little <laughs> weasley people like the other one's like Wallace Shawn you know and Josh the other one's Peck from Snow Day inconceivable and the other one's Gilbert Gottfried and she's like I've got three older brothers and then you just hear inconceivable <laughs> She got three other brothers, and then just Alan, Steve Buscemi being like, "Oh, she's your teeth. She got three other brothers." Alan A. Allen, Wayne from Snow Day, and the apparently best friend from I'll Be Home for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Those are the three older brothers, <laughs> all younger than her. I like I said, Alan A. Allen <laughs> didn't say what movie, and you could have just said Rupert Grint. <laughs> like that's the best part. Of- but grown up Rupert Grint's kind of. I love that you got three older brothers in this movie. Rupert Grint is still a child. <laughs> well, but, uh, Bruce- in fact, all of them are still children. I listed like early two thousands and nineties movies. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the predator monster has infiltrated the facility, and we find out that he's impervious to bullets. But oh. he's not impervious to, a, like, you know, to yeah. being punched. Well, it's not fire. He he resists fire and bullets. Uh, punches and bullets are different things. Like, his like, his helmet resists the fire and his body resists is ra- that range actually... attacks. Mm-hmm. Thank like, you. does neg- negative 50% So damage. what's a great movie, in, great moment in this movie, Reese? Oh, oh. This thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. I'm trying to host... <laughs> <laughs> a show in which we analyze and talk about a movie that is forgotten, and you're just taking the piss. <laughs> I've been doing this for like 40 episodes now with you, Bartek, and you're usually a professional, but this episode, what is it about this movie that brings the giggle right. fits to you? Is it because it's an action fueled ride of adrenaline that brings out the inner child in you, and that's what brilliant the brilliance of this movie? Yes, Ryan, because like you said, it's a family movie, but also, you have to understand. I've done three more episodes, and you in three episodes' time, you'll become just like me. <laughs> I'll do that out of spite. Yep. Three episodes' time, you'll become just like me. What? Boring? No. Exactly. <laughs> I'm Bartek. I already said that I have my name Bartek fuck off in this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, probably right. 40th anniversary. Yeah, it makes sense. 
the happy 40th. Uh, I don't even know if that's true. I think I, this is, uh, I, I, think <laughs> I know we're in the 30s. That's it. I think that's a rough guess. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, listeners, which you most likely will never Baby's do. Baby's day out was like 30. I Thank you. Since, so, I don't know. So, so, this is a cinematic classic, and I think a part of what really makes this film work is balancing the family-friendly elements with the sci-fi wonderment. Because, you know, a lot of the cinematic classics are those... Combin- that weird combination, E.T., you know, uh, uh, Short Circuit, you know, uh, you know, it goes, of these movies that have sci-fi elements mixed with the family-friendly elements, and I Could wonder... Could you argue that for Terminator 2? Yes, yeah, family-friendly, the- yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Oh, maybe. Terminator 3, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> family-friendly. Salvation. Uh, uh Genesis. Nah. <laughs> I haven't seen Genesis. I haven't well, seen Genesis old either. man Schwarzenegger looks after <laughs> eight-year-old Sarah Connor, Aww, cute. and she calls him Pops. Oh, that's Aww. cute. And then there's the question in the movie in which it's like, does is she a virgin still? Because no way would Schwarzenegger Terminator <laughs> let her fuck a boy. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, that's great. I need to see that. And then and then you question, wait. And they had sex because she treats him more like a romantic also, figure than a dad sugar figure. Sugar pops rather than pops. You saying? Oh yes. <laughs> so here's the thing that I would be if I was a scientist. I saw this chick rock up. I'd be like, I've never seen you here at the facility the entire time wearing, I've worked here. Wearing and where's tags, your yeah. badge, lady? Also, those heels. <laughs> See, I thought they were gonna have like a gag where they're like they're also sci-fi nerds, so they're like ogling her or something. Like that. Uh, <laughs> the girl says to do this. I thought you were gonna say there's a gag that they're all the other sci-fi convention people. They've also <laughs> snuck into race to the Witch Mountain to get what Gary Marshall like. Plot twist: Gary Marshall is actually like this elaborate general of these nerds, and he like gets them to infiltrate. That's how he gets all of his intel. Like he's actually the Area Fifty One for the Area Fifty One guys. <laughs> How good would that be? That'd be great. I would. Too bad he's dead, Gary Not Marshall. Too bad. Yeah. Rest in peace, you crap filmmaker. <laughs> he died like two months ago, right? Yeah. Three? He's still warm. We could get his body right now and we'll put him in an oven. His body's and... still warm. Yeah. If you keep it in the sun. Oh. I... <laughs> you can't squeeze water from a rock. <laughs> you can't squeeze water from a dead Gary. <laughs> from a dead I mean, Gary I Marshall. Mean, you could no, just any Gary. <laughs> Don't just listen down to Gary Marshall, jeez. Oh, good. Okay. Well, my vacuum cleaner's name is Gary, so you know. You named your mine vacuum is called Robbie, I think. Robbie. Oh, that makes more sense because Robbie the robot from Lost in Space. Well, no, I think the brand is just called Robbie. <laughs> the ro- fun fact: the robot's name in Lost in Space was not Robbie the robot. He was just the robot. Robbie the Robot is from Forbidden Planet. Oh, yeah, sorry, guys. Get it together, Reese. Hold hey, on, hold fact, on a second, hold you on. You can't even choose uh, choose a moment because Bartek just says this scene. Wait, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> Reese, what you, didn't you do music for a Forbidden Planet musical? Oh, no, it was a sequel to Forbidden Planet. It's called Return to the Forbidden Planet. And you but did... the planet died. <laughs> It exploded. It was a it was a school production. It was right? a school production. They just well that your school production failed then because what are they returning to? Oh look, dirt and space. <laughs> oh look, this is the scene with the uh, special effects. Why? I genuinely believe that they're wearing white suits. So you telling me Cinema... that's a CGI effect? Cinema magic, Rian. Here's the best part. I did not know that Guardians of the Galaxy, years later, would do the exact same ending as this movie, which is they all hold hands and they're impervious to death. Oh, wow. So is this better than the ending to Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid? Uh, I think, well, this inspired Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. <laughs> exactly. But which one did it better? Was it the new well, one? Well, obviously this, this one. Obviously. Okay. So Butch Cassidy was a remake of this? Yeah. Cool. I thought her hair was on fire just a second there. <laughs> but it was just the blowing in the wind. So this is the final climax in which the aliens are there and you think, oh, okay, the government... Wouldn't it be really neat if one of the government guys actually hopped onto the spaceship and didn't say anything and just rode off into space and that's the sequel? He just pretended to be an alien and be like, well, Help! they look human. Yeah. So, so you to be how human. would they know, really, if he wasn't one of them? I think the thing that I brought that I'm going to talk about later on... Will fix this problem? It doesn't fix it, but I think it sort of touches upon it. Touches something. <laughs> Ew, don't touch Reese's I, 
I poked Ryan's wrist. That's Guys. just to let you know what happened. Oh, audience. he got a gun! It's big, like his dick. <laughs> Does he shoot it? Does no, he, he doesn't because he's a pussy. I guess to be fair, the most literal thing did happen. He did get the gun. And then he dies. Wouldn't it be a plot twist if he actually died? Like, he gets a gun and he's like, this is it, I'm going to do it. And he just gets exploded. First, <laughs> it wouldn't be so family friendly. First, no, it would be. First of all, the word is he kills. Second of all... <laughs> he um, dies. Yeah. Second of all, there isn't really a second of all, but I'll just make one up. Uh, that would be really sad. Yeah. And then it turns into Batman vs Superman where it's like a funeral at the end, but then the dirt rises from his grave, and you're like, oh, he's alive. That guy's got a good butt, though. This this armor really gives a good butt effect. Like the Batman and Robin effect. It's very much Better. like Solid Snake. Solid Snake. That's exactly right. It's very much like Snake Ooh. Plissken from Escape from New York, which helped inspire Snake. Did he have a good ass? Oh, yeah. Kurt Russell. Kurt, Kurt Russell, yeah, of course. Kurt Russell has an amazing everything. Amazing. Especially the ass. Especially his beard too. Ah. Uh, what about the manliest part of all? The what? penis. We haven't seen that yet, though. Ew. Only one. Ew, Ryan. Only the one person knows Ryan? about that. It's is Goldie Horn. Penis. No, lots of people know about the Kurt Russell penis. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, Bartek? The most manly part of all. The belly button. Oh, he's a great belly button yeah. too. Kurt Russell is a great. Here's what I said. Use telekinesis. Uh, to push the door. Ryan, she needs more MP. She used it up. How much can she lift? Does she lift, bro? Does she lift, bro? Uh, no, think... does she even lift, bro? Oh, does she eat? Uh, yes. See, yes. he gets it now that I said the word even. <laughs> this scene. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this movie's all about memes. Dies, Reese. Dies. <laughs> <laughs> Reese, does she even lift, bro? Yes. Well, how much can she lift? I'm not sure. Maybe. Well, you know how some people can lift 10 kilos 100 times? Scientifically, does that mean you can lift 10 kilos times 100 once? You mean 100 kilos? 10 kilos. Sorry, 1,000 kilos? Yeah. Can you lift that once, t scientifically? 1,000 kilos? Yeah, once. No. Why? If I you can lift 10 kilos 100 times... Well, that's a Look, that's a hundred. Reese, let me put Kill. it to you. A, let me put it to you a different way. Let's say you're completely naked, and I go up to you, <laughs> and then I poke your penis ten times, not too roughly, just you know, it's kind of like uh. in the eye. Now, let's pretend I didn't do that. What if I just poked it once, but like with the combined force of all of those pokes? Could <laughs> oh. you, would it be like too much? Or would it be not enough? Or would it just be the exact same thing? Because, you know, it's the exact same thing, just would, at once. Would I, like, have to choose between the light ten pokes or the one very serious poke? Wow, I mean, if, yeah. the fa if the fact that you think there is necessary for a choice, then that probably means that there's a difference. I'd probably go for the light ten times. Why? What, are you gay or something? No, no, no hang on. <laughs> you have the one strong poke, that's annoying. <laughs> Reese, Ten you know, wide yeah. pokes, that seems a little better. Uh, Reese, we don't have a gun to your head. You don't have to answer these questions. <laughs> <laughs> but now we know. Reese wants to be touched. No, I, I didn't say I wanted to be touched. It was just, I thought it was an option. <laughs> it's an option you want. Wait, what the fuck's wrong with me this episode? <laughs> you're, you're on point. Like his penis. On point. So, uh, Reese has now got his hands over his face. <laughs> So Bartek could touch his penis ten times no, gently mean, without him oh. trying to restrain it. <laughs> what if I done? Uh, yeah, I really thought that this the rock was actually trying to help him up because he's like a oh, dog act. Yeah, look I at thought that. he was gonna be like, I'm human, you know, I have compassion. But instead, he gives him the rock eyebrow he's and like, then punches him. He killed Jason Voorhees. Oh, so, oh yeah, so that was why he looked like Jason Voorhees yeah, because he, he had no mask on. So it was gonna be like, a, I'm your brother. I'll save you, brother. <laughs> it could have been like, look. We can all get along. What? No. And he just turned into Mark Wahlberg. <coughs> Cough oh, it out. Washington. The, the oh, entire, yeah. oh, yeah. The bus. The entire district of Washington calls him. Yeah, you know, it's Washington. No, it's George Washington from the grave. <laughs> and he's like, well, what I said with my wooden teeth, now I want alien teeth. <laughs> the whole movie was so George Washington could get his shiny <laughs> pair of alien teeth. And the big tragedy is that it's the exact same as human teeth. Do you think aliens brush their teeth? Yeah. If they um, had teeth, they would have to look. Well, they do have to. Well, Ryan, this movie follows a specific advice that we've been given in a previous episode. 
Uh, I can't remember which specifically. I think it's around the time of Black Annie, but it might be a bit before. Blanny, yeah. <clears throat> Blanny. In this movie, the aliens never, ever eat. Oh, they don't eat. <laughs> Nor does The Rock Johnson. He never eats. Never they go to a diner, but I don't think they ever, ever eat. <laughs> never, ever eat. That was Zathura, by the way. Zathura. Um, they never, ever eat. Do they? Do they not eat? That's true. And this will... I ate. Hey, how many? How long did this take place? About this two days. Two, three days. Yeah. Yeah. It's and not no, a week, but it's definitely days. At no point did we see the Rock ever do a piss. No. Or a, so, or a poopy. By that logic, the Rock doesn't poop. Just like women. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was intense. But you know who did poop? <laughs> but. You know who did poop? John Judd's back. You know who did poop in this movie? Reese the, just said it. The dog. <laughs> Off screen, mind you, but but we still knew it was poop. Do you reckon that that off screen thing might have taken a couple of days in the Eddie's own adventure? How good would it be if you had like a little special featurette? It's called Junkyard's Adventure, and it was it's like his his point of view throughout the movie. Junkyard's first errand. <laughs> errand. Junkyard's first dies, Reese. <laughs> oh, man. Junkyard like dies. Evil Dead, the dog dogs. dies first. And then look at these two. Look at them saying goodbye. It's E.T. referencing. And my favorite is this is when acting 101 is great. She puts her hand up before anything's happened. <laughs> like they haven't even gotten up. And she wasn't <laughs> waving. It was like to block whatever. But nothing happened. And she puts it up again in this shot. Maybe they should have. They should have done another take where Carla didn't put a hand up. Uh, no, she actually just wanted to have a question to the director. <laughs> She's like, "Hey, am I in the sequel?" It's like, no, 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 we're shooting that. We're shooting that. Oh, I'll uh, just slowly uh, put it down <laughs> and then put it back up. Naturally, put it down. But yeah, it was just very funny to uh, me okay, that so she did the, that. The the spaceship is going to. Oh, look at that face. It's gonna it's gonna <laughs> fly away. I actually said, so "Boom!" Boom. Oh, it's gone. Uh, I that's back. I thought it would have been cool if it exploded, <laughs> and the government guys put bombs on there. But they took the negative 100% fire damage helmet, so it's okay. Yeah, only for one of them though. Yeah. Did you like the fact that this woman's name was Sunday Stevens, and then earlier in the movie, the woman at the uh, Planet Earth thing walks up and goes, "Hi, I'm Sunday," and I'm like, "Why are you called Sunday?" I like that the stormtroopers just appear throughout the movie a bit. I also like the fact that the guy who just asked the question is the guy earlier who claimed that he was in, uh, what was it, a crop circle, got abducted, his genitals played with, and then got married to an alien. I would have watched his movie too. Mm. Uh, I like how you could tell that this is reshoots or something because The Rock looks like The Rock. Because he's shaved, right? Yeah. And he's got oh, his yeah, he's... teeth and his hairstyle is rock like and she's also got like completely different hair and Cheech Marin is Eddie I love Cheech Marin is Eddie me too so they're back hey they're here again and now they're complete fans of his even though they were giving him shit earlier you know what we didn't even talk about we didn't even talk about like the we Geonosians. did no we didn't even talk we talked about the wolf but we never actually talked about his gangsters actually doing nothing in this movie like they served no point no they were yeah. just there they appear in one scene then they appear in another they yeah. only are there look, see this is the brilliance of filmmaking see sometimes characters don't need to serve a, a, a legit purpose their purpose was character building for The Rock. You see, they are examples of his previous life where he used to be a misfit, uh, a corrupt person, a gangster. The past chasing after him. The past literally chasing him. And now we see he's made it legitimately and he's got that car and now he's speeding. He'll be arrested and go back to prison. You know, it's an unfortunate end to and a also, kid movie. Also, the desert has nothing to do with his past, so they will not go in the desert. That's true. That's true. So, the movie has now ended, and we've had a lot to say. There were lots of things slung around in this Relevant movie. Relevant things, yes. yes. We're now going to go with our reviews and the ratings of our choice. I'm going to go first, because uh, I'm super keen. I saw this in the cinema, and I saw it at the time, and I said to myself, that movie was really, really good. That was really, really fun. But back then, I said to myself, but this isn't going to be... A big movie in terms of being remembered back then I knew and back then I didn't still didn't know why I thought what's missing and that's the beauty with age 
as you get older, you get wiser. And what I've learned from this experience and watching it again is it's not the film's fault for uh, not being as successful as it should have been. It's still a great story with great acting, great directing, great everything involved in it is top notch. I think it was the times. The times weren't ready for Race to Witch Mountain, and maybe we'll never be ready for Race to Witch Mountain. Maybe there's a parallel universe in which this film is the exact same, but the circumstances for its popularity are dramatically different. And I hope one day our universe is split open and that one bleeds into our universe, because sincerely, I think that we live in a dystopian world where we can't even give The Rock a proper movie. He's been in big movies, don't get me wrong, but he hasn't had that movie yet. And I feel like we live in that topsy-turvy universe where we live in the tragedy universe for The Rock. Where The Rock's great, everybody loves him, but he hasn't had that success yet. And I think he's due. And I think if we all go back to this movie and all the kids' movies that he did, we'll realise he was always on point and he always will be. This movie really touched my heart. It had interesting characters, interesting sci-fi elements mixed with a family-friendly tone. The director has done many other things and I like his work as well. And it's a Disney property and at the end of the day, Disney is a high standard of entertainment and it is that thing of when someone of such high standards of entertainment pumps out something that is considered less we consider it to be awful or not good at all, but really, in reality, it's, it's very good. Very good, but since we're used to five star things, when we get something that's four and a half stars, we think it's a one star. If I had to give this movie a rating, which of course I do have to, it's hard not to say that this movie gets a Dwayne out of The Rock Johnson. Okay, uh, so what do you give it though? I give it a Dwayne out of the Rock Johnson. Ah, it was oh, hard, no. but you did it. It was hard like a rock. Yeah. No, I give it a uh, Dice Reese. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Reese? Let's hear. Let's hear your thoughts. Okay. And a rating <clears throat> out of your choice. A rating out of my choice. Oh, that's at the end. Though. Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay. So I can remember watching this movie at the cinema, and just letting it pass by, and it was just like, oh. You know what, this was good entertainment for about 90 minutes, or under 90 minutes, or even over 90 minutes. Well, it's and about 100 minutes long, but fair oh, it's, enough. Oh, it is. <laughs> <sighs> God damn it. Get it together, Reese, or don't get it at all. <laughs> Let him continue. He's saying words of wisdom. Um, and then... Words <laughs> of wisdom, and I say, um, okay. The fact that this movie was so straightforward... It, to the many of other people, it would have been like another opportunity for them to ravage this movie. Savagely beat it to the ground with their fists tight and their belts tight. Um, On? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, considering it is a remake, gentlemen, I think it has done a very good job at trying to keep it safe. Because, of course, everyone's going to savage a remake. I mean, look at the thing. Mm. Yeah. And the, but, okay, the, maybe the later remake was not so good of the thing. Mm. But the remake before that. 1980s. 1980s. Very good. And I think this remake does a very good job at trying to keep its head above the water. And it does that very well. Especially watching it the second time, I realized, hey, it's trying to pay homage to a good film. And it did that. And I can appreciate films who do that. So, you know what? I'm going to give it <clears throat> the rating of uh, a jalapeno's Dorito out of all the Doritos in the world. Did we make Doritos references earlier? <laughs> oh, we did, didn't we? Did we? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, what? Let's not question it. But like, <laughs> a jalapeno Dorito is easily worth like a million like Doritos. <laughs> normal Doritos. So that's like not a one out of a hundred, whatever you said. It was a. It was like a million out of a hundred, right? Yeah. 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 So go, that was his rating. Go, Bartek. <laughs> Can't wait to hear Bartek. <laughs> Can't wait to hear mine. Yeah. Um, so this movie, I watched it last night. It was a cold, wonder cold, wonderful night where <laughs> I'd just come home from a nice dinner at a Vietnamese restaurant celebrating my grandmama's birthday. 
Almost that's seven. Polish for grandmother. No, that's babcha. <clears throat> there you go. That's Polish for grandmother. I went on the computer, just typed up race to which mountain, buy legally, definitely, order immediately, and it came <laughs> right to my door. Um, put it in, and I watched it. So my thoughts going through the movie. I started off wondering, where's this going? In the middle, I was wondering, yeah, this is going well. Where's it going? And at the end, I'm like, yeah, it went somewhere. <laughs> now, where am I going? <laughs> Just leave. And my... No. <laughs> and then... I had to think about the movie. The movie went. Now I have to went. Where, <laughs> where for out art thou am I wenting? And I decided, decided. <laughs> I'm such. A, I used the wrong word in my review. <laughs> decided. So the review is now a moot point. <laughs> I've completely invalidated my review. This movie, it's made me think a lot about the star in the movie. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who stars in the movie. He's actually a mineral, but go on. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> mineral, rock, whatever. No, I think he, he's... Minerals. He's definitely someone who is going somewhere and who has definitely went somewhere. Mm. But, yeah, there's that whole mystery of why hasn't he been... Like, on that level of Jackie Chan last decade. Like, wh what's going on there? And I made that joke earlier on in this episode, like, oh, he's a wrestler. Maybe he should have used his wrestling skills. But then if you think about it, is wrestling really more interesting than, like, martial arts? It's kind of like, you can't compare apples to grapes. Okay, yeah. I, thought you, I thought it was going to get a yeah or something out of that. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad you agree with me. We just nodded. We're like, forgetting this is an audio track. It's an audio oh, I didn't forget. I just, I'm, I'm just tired of saying stuff. Yeah, go on. Tomato. So, <laughs> honestly, it, when I was watching it, I was thinking, what would other people think? Obviously not you guys, because we're intelligent. But what would other yeah. people think of this movie? And, yeah, I would have thought that they'd think that it's just an okay kind of movie. Like, oh, there's some action in there. There's there's an ending to it. It's it's a passable movie, but I thought there's clearly something more to this. Well, what is it? And I guess that at its essence is why it's considered an unappreciated masterpiece that I don't think has even hit six on IMDb. No. Yeah. Mm. So it's definitely a movie that I I need to watch again in the future mm. for sure. If I have to give this movie a rating, I would have to give it a big bold aerial font size 40 zero because zero problems ah now before we get into my favorite part which is the reviews from imdb yep i just want to uh make sure uh bartek did you want to share this special experience that you were talking about that you had found in your journeys yet or after the review i think i want to do it after the review. well the reviews there are quite a few but they are all very good reviews there are some solid reviews that speak on the chords that we are speaking on, and there are reviews from that parallel dimension that I talked about earlier on. So let's jump straight into a 10-star review from 2009. It's always good to mention the year because this is when it came out, so this is fresh as. The title is, Unique Story That Made Me Race in Nostalgia. <clears throat> Despite a good amount of bad reviews, people are flocking to see this film. Wonder if it's the picky old men that don't find a kid's film decent enough for proper work that disappoint me. I mean... I mean... What? Sorry, could you read that again? <laughs> no. I, was, I, was I wonder if it's the picky old men that don't find a kid's film decent enough for proper work that disappoint me. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> See, the first time you said it, I thought you were gonna—I thought you were saying something like it's a woman saying that men disappoint. Excuse me. <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> I mean, who worse to, is, to judge a kids' movie than an adult? At least a teenager has still got the perspective of a child. Oh. The film really brought me back to good times at the theaters. I wasn't around for the original, so I can't compare the two, and went in not knowing what to expect. Initially, you could go in and see all the things structurally or aesthetically incorrect and unpleasing about the story film-wise. 
However, if you take the movie for what it is, you'll see it's, the, it's truly the beautifully crafted action adventure every kid longs to experience and captured within the mysticism and excitement of a good space story just using enough CGI to complement the film without overpowering its actors as so many movies do today. It promises a simple story with inspiring ideals and experiences woven into its heart. So I couldn't help but I couldn't help but put myself in the story for this one and became completely immersed in the race. The great plot, unique characters and pulse racing advent pulse racing adventure will keep keep you at the edge of your seat until the end. 10 stars. Mm. So this next one is a, a bit of a mixed bag of views from 2009. It is a seven star review and it, it, it structurally goes down the movie. This is painfully close to a great movie. Mm. First of all, it's not great. Second, any of the reviewers who talk about the original being a classic, I was 11 in 1975. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a tip it was typical of the Disney crap released at the time. Finally, when I say close to great, I mean in an E.T. slash Iron Giant way. Instead of instead, it's more along the lines of Cocoon. What? Cocoon. cocoon. You haven't seen Cocoon? I've seen Cocoon. But it's more along no. the lines of Cocoon and how it's popular. This is a good movie, and at times it is great, but as a whole, it falls short. Much of the film is typical. You know, aliens are good, men in black are bad, action, chase, adventure, uh, action, chase, environment, message, yada, yada. Here's where it's better than your typical sci-fi action family film. <clears throat> Number one, everyone except, everyone except for, uh, Carla, uh, Carla Gugno? Uh, Gugino? 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 Okay. Dr. Alex Friedman is excellent in their roles, spelt R-O-L-L-S. <laughs> roles. <laughs> Even she isn't practically bad, just not as good. There are some good cameos. Gary Marshall is great. Good on you. Number two, the action. While this is PG, it doesn't shy away from violence or guns. But the catch is, when Dwayne Johnson and the teen aliens are running away from an alien bounty hunter early on, the teens look scared. Anna Sophia Robb's eyes really deliver a sense of vulnerability. I found this an I found this as effective as the train tunnel chase. <laughs> just, <laughs> just she looks. <laughs> she can look scared. She looks. She looks, she does looks scared. pretty scared. <laughs> Number three, it is rather dark for a PG film. The Men in Black are a covert group from a federal government who point their loaded weapon constantly at innocent U.S. citizens. The film briefly makes the parallel to the alien bounty hunter who is a military agent from the Teen Aliens planet. Washington is mentioned behind the man in black. They want to kill our beloved alien teens. This guy's an alien. <laughs> Number four. As with most great sci-fi, it relates to our times. Our protagonist teens have no rights because they are illegal aliens. The men in black are out of control. Granted, this would work better if Bush was still president, but still... It directly plays on the reality that the executive branch of our government has unchecked power. Number five, two sections of the go two sections of the movie takes place around a sci-fi convention. This allows for plenty of gags that remind us that the filmmakers didn't take this movie too seriously. Now, if this isn't your kind of film, don't be tempted to see it. But for family action. Yes, for sci-fi, it's a must-see. For a sci-fi action flick, it does everything well, except the ending. And that's its fault. It's the typical cornball alien ending, a la Cocoon or Splash. Spl After the first two acts being so strong, it's too bad. Let's compare this to Bolts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Let's compare this to Bolt. Since both are PG family Disney fair, after a poor second act, 
Bolt delivered with a rather emotion emotion resolution. I think they meant emotional. <laughs> but emotion resolution. With Race to Witch Mountain, Act 3 becomes a Ron Howard formula. Strange, as Act 1 and Act 2 were almost good enough to be a must-see for everyone. How could this film have delivered a better how could this film delivered better in the end? First of all, play up the teen aliens sacrificing themselves to save our world. Environment. So it reminds us of this island earth. And Sarah dies making this sacrifice. Now Seth and Jack stay strong until the end when they finally let loose with the tears. Sarah's innocence was very effective in this movie and this would be just emotionally devastating. But in the sequel we discover that Sarah's body has been reproduced and her soul was stored in Jack Bruno's brain. Think Star Trek 2 II and 3. So he has a sudden fetish for female teen accents. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay I see where this is going now. Go on, go on. <laughs> so, Cackle, so he has cackle. a sudden fetish for female teen, ac female teen accents and a strange fascination with Hannah Montana. Would you pay to see Dwayne Johnson air singing with Hannah Montana? Wig, earrings, and bow in his hair? I think so. So Disney may have missed the boat on this, on this, big time. So close. I did, yeah, that was a roller coaster. <laughs> that reminds me of the guy who said that the next Tomb Raider game should have Lara Croft with breast cancer just to get people <laughs> sympathizing with her. So this next one is a bit of a long review, but it's perfectly on board with everything. 2009, most of these, if not all of these, are from 2009, boys. Young Talent. 10 stars. <clears throat> I'm glad I saw this movie. Before reading any of the other comments on here, or here on IMDb, as a 63-year-old man... <laughs> context, context. <laughs> I see at least four good movies per week, and a few oh, bad no. ones. He sees a lot of good movies. <laughs> and a few bad ones. I want to this guy. I was drawn to this movie by Anna Sophia Robb and hope to continue to see everything she does. He's 63 years old, by the way. <laughs> um, and everything she does. As one who fell in love with her in Bridge to Terabithia. She is 63. And she's... <laughs> I can't <laughs> forget her. That's fine then, right? <laughs> and, thrilled, <laughs> and thrilled with her acting, but not so much by her bratty character in... Sleepwalk. He knows her career. <laughs> I wanted to see her alive and well and thriving. Hey, in this movie, she is all that and more. She even has adorable superpowers. <laughs> I went into the theater to see her in Jumper, but she's only in the first few minutes. <laughs> That's it. This... Was she wearing a jumper? No, Jumper is that movie. The oh, okay. movie Jumper. This is the first movie I've seen with Alexander Ludwig playing Brother Seth to Anna Sophia Sarah. She, he was brilliant in the part and I hope to see him again with or without his superpowers. It was a pleasant surprise to see even if I, it was a pleasant surprise to see even if in a minor role for the Chris Marquis as Pope. Chris played Adam in Joan of Arcadia TV series. He played slightly flawed but ev but ever lovable character and and not that different here as government rookie. He didn't even have a name. <laughs> government rookie. I'm always pleased to follow any of the cast from that show. I was not drawn to see Dwayne Johnson, but as Jack Bruno, he brings a strong balance to the young players. Gary Marshall and others bring a wealth of credits to the table and a credit to their parts. And why is Cheech Marin, as the reluctant mechanic, uncredited? He was credited. <laughs> I literally read it out. I have to mention the amusing and entertaining irony of having our real space aliens at a UFO convention full of crazy looking caricatures of other favorite sci-fi movies and UFO psychos. I didn't even think of that. I didn't, I didn't care if this was a remake or copies of other characters or whether the special effects were perfect or believable. After a steady diet of heavy Academy Award nominated movies for the last six weeks, I gave this movie a 10 for pure absorbing entertainment and a fabulous showcase uh, for the developing young talent. 
I want to know that guy's story. What? Like, <laughs> for the last six weeks, he's been watching nothing but these movies. He's 63 years old and really loves this young girl's career. Mm-hmm. And he hopes to see more of her. So this next one, seven star. Now, 2009. It was a special time to be alive, 2009. I mean, this movie came out. And this is called Great for the Family. Now, warning, guys. There may be spoilers ahead. So just... Keep in there. Put on your big boy pants. I just saw this movie about an hour ago. Oh, shit. And I gotta say, I was impressed. So this is, like, really fresh from the movie. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm not big on remakes of classics. And I was kind of turned off by The Rock being in the movie. But I ended up being entertained quite well. Surprisingly, I didn't expect so many people to catch The Rock's elbow blow. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, amuse me. He kicks a major... Ass in this movie. <laughs> the movie is basically about two alien children with powers that employ the rock, who is a taxi driver, to take them to their destination to find some alien object and later to their ship. They have to achieve this while all being chased by government agents. Gunfire, explosions, alien weapons, and alien powers all rolled into one film. This movie is a great movie to take the family to see. Or you could even go see it yourself. Even with all the action and the rock smacking heads and the great chase scenes, they managed to put in a pinch of funny into the film. Just just a pinch. <laughs> with all that other stuff. And the last one, which I know Bartek's gonna love. Oh dear. <laughs> it is a six star review. Ooh. Which plus knowing <laughs> equal <laughs> equals <laughs> Perfect double feature for fans. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. So, which plus knowing equals perfect double feature for fans. Mm, now, this contains spoilers as well. Oh, shit. Lots of good news here. Number one, The Rock, a.k.a. Dwayne Johnson, has honed his acting skills enough to top Nicolas Cage. Number two, if the racing vehicles towards the end of Knowing, make no sense, switch to which. <laughs> Sorry, switch to what? Which. Switch to which. Number three, if the secret garden sequence in which seems too cheesy, check out Ezekiel's wheels at the end of Knowing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's just making comparisons. What's this knowing movie? I oh Nicholas Cage got to get on to. All oh, right. Where, number four, when the omniscient dog whisperer Hulk cha- uh, cha- uh, challenging alien kids in which get on your nerves, rest with powerless pair from knowing. <laughs> number five, when the absurd <laughs> when the absurd when the absurd numbers sequence in knowing strains your strains your credulity past the breaking point. Relax in the gentle vacuum of witch's plot holes. Sure, you have to research the film schedule for your local multiplex to find compatible showtimes, but trust me, watching only the best half of these two flicks will greatly enhance your cinematic experience. So he's saying that all the parts where witch is good that other movie's bad, and vice versa? Yeah. So, so basically, <laughs> you basically at the same time. splice them together into one movie. And sorry, what was this Knowing movie? It's with it's Nicolas, Nicolas Cage. Cage. It's about the end of the world. Is it just called Knowing? Yeah, yeah it's just called okay. Knowing. It's got Ben Mendelsohn. So, that was one I thought you would enjoy. <laughs> so, here's a, oh, there's so many questions about that. So many questions. So, those were those things. Yep. I enjoyed this week's reviews. But, Bartek, what's your little uh, bonus thing that you got for us this it's, time? Uh? It's also a review. Oh, God. <laughs> Is it from Roger Ebert? Is it? Oh, oh God. That little cunt. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Before the sneak preview of Race to Witch Mountain, they had a little quiz show and gave away T-shirts. One question. Who plays Jack Bruno? Half the audience roared, The Rock! Not one lonely vote for Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> the other famous movie Rock was born Roy Harold Scherer Jr. It's a name that stays in the mind. <laughs> That's the first paragraph. I think Dwayne Johnson has a likeable screen presence and is, is a good choice for the innocuous family entertainment like this. And also, he once sent me some Hawaiian macadamia nut brickle. <laughs> so, The Rock, 
personally bribed Roger Ebert for a good review. Wait, wait, wait. I would have mailed it back. <laughs> Sorry. All right, come on, man. This part right here. <laughs> I would have mailed it back because film critics are not supposed to receive gifts from movie stars, <laughs> but I accidentally ate it first. <laughs> he, op- he opened it and he already had it in his mouth, but he's like, no, mail it back. So he gets so, so wait, go on. So wait, he likes the rocks. <laughs> Screen presents because he also gave him some. What was it? Hawaiian macadamia nut brickle. Good. So what else did he think? <sighs> but, oh I acc- but I accidentally ate first. What Johnson does here is provide a credible tough guy action hero in a non-threatening mode. This is still the same paragraph as that brickle thing. So. Good. He rules over chases, fights, explosions, and an ooze monster. Yet never seems nasty, so the kids can feel safe around him. When did he find an ooze monster? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> Young audiences will like the kids in the movie, played by Anna Sophia Robb and Alexander Ludwig. And in using kids as the co-stars, the movie has its cake and eats too. Because, <laughs> because Sarah and Seth may look like they're 15 or 16, but actually, you see, they're aliens whose flying saucer crash-landed and is being held at a secret government UFO facility inside Witch Mountain. So secret, the mountain is not shown on Google Maps. <laughs> I suspected right away it was a mountain made for this movie because it is shaped like a sword-off version of the mashed potato skull. <laughs> 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 right, sorry, God, is it? Yeah. Uh, 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 Reese. It's okay, we're gonna make it. Uh, uh, Reese is dying. Uh, Thanks, uh, Roger uh, Mashed potato sculpture <laughs> that Richard Dreyfus kept sculpting in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. The one that resembled, you remember, the outcrop where the flying saucer landed. Yeah, I do remember that. Oh, God. God this is Two paragraphs left. Oh, calm down, Reese. You're almost there. Anyway, anyway, in the reimagining, that's in quotations, reimagining of Escape to Witch Mountain 1975, mm-hmm. The Rock plays a former driver for a Las Vegas mob boss who goes straight after who goes straight after he gets out of prison and starts driving a taxi he goes straight yeah yeah ah. oh he goes straight <laughs> i see yes <laughs> he just goes straight <laughs> after <laughs> he goes straight for all the comments he used in that last paragraph this one needs some mm. in his back seat one day sarah and seth materialize Explain they are. <laughs> they literally ex- got in. Explain that they are aliens and ask him to drive them to a remo- remote desert location. Best they- part is he, they, that doesn't even happen. They don't even say they're aliens until like late, late in the movie. Yeah. They talk like an artificial <laughs> intelligence program that got a D in English. Unlike Roger Ebert. <laughs> Although later they gradually start to sound more like Disney teenagers. They mm-hmm. later, they're later joined by Dr. Alex Friedman, Carla Gugino. An expert who was in Vegas lecturing to fanboys and girls. And <laughs> <laughs> fanboys. That's one word, fanboys and girls. I like how we had to include the <laughs> distinction. Yeah, not fangirls, just girls. And girls. At a combination UFO convention and costume party. <laughs> On their tail is a pursuit team of federal agents led by a hard nose named Burke. Karen Hines? Karen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Burke moves in an, in a caravan of three black SUVs with tinted glass, although when necessary he can materialise dozens of heavily armed SWAT team members. Hmm, <clears throat> it's true. The chase leads deep into Witch Mountain, although not before the kids enter a buried chamber beneath a miner's shack and there <laughs> obtain some kind of extraterrestrial cell phone extracted by Seth after plunging his arm up to the elbow in a pulsating mass of gelatinous goo. Oh yeah. Last paragraph. Oh. Further details I will leave to your discovery. Since Seth and Sarah only appropriated the bodies of human teenagers, I was left with a couple of questions. <laughs> One, did they displace <laughs> real teenagers or only clone themselves? Two, they're cute, but what do they actually look like as aliens? Not quivering gobs of mucilaginous viscidity, I trust. That's the end of the review. Uh, so, what Roger Ebert was really questioning was something that we didn't even question was, do they kill teenagers and pretend to be them? And what do they really look like? I, I think you mentioned at one point in the, re- in the sorry, the movie, 
uh, do they actually look like that, or are they just taking the form? And I think I hinted, like, oh, there's this review that I'm going to read, kind of. Oh, he nailed it. Uh, Roger Ebert and I have a feud between us. One part of the feud is I'm alive, he's not. <laughs> and uh, the other is I'm better, he's not. And uh, at this point, we are both on the same page in this movie, which is cinematic brilliance. Uh, but you didn't receive uh, Hawaiian macadamia peanut. Like you don't know what I've received from The Rock. From the Rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about it, guys. You guys have always been fantastic, amazing, superfluous, wonderful listening people. And we have been fortunate enough to have you listened to us talk about a movie that deserves more love and more praise which is race to witch mountain it is a film that warms everybody's hearts even roger ebert's cold ice heart as always you guys have been fantastic if you want to um give us a review on itunes give us a rating that would be fantastic that would really help us out and uh if you even want to suggest a possible movie we could do on the show uh we have our facebook page which is spit and polish presents and uh we have a link there or you could even just drop it on on uh on podbean as well um because hey Bartek had never seen Race to Witch Mountain before, and he might have missed it, and what happens if I had never heard of it? I would have missed it, and then Reese, who knew? Maybe he didn't see it either. Maybe I forgot and we all could have missed out on this movie. There might be a movie you're sitting there going, Ooh, when are they gonna do that movie? We may never do it unless you tell us. And then we could be judging it and go, Yes, of course! That seems really good for the show! As always, be kind to each other, guys. In this episode, Reese, why don't you give us your Oscar the Grouch impression? Oscar the Grouch impression? Yes. Do I have one? Do it. It's called um, improvising. Um. Make, make him give a comment about the movie. I thought it sucked. <laughs>